Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 3, Episode 28. Today we're talking Ernest Scared Stupid from 1991, directed by John Cherry. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor Nilbog McGraw. And I'm Pissy Miles. Welcome to the dumpster. She told me about this troll that had red glowing eyes and walks like this. <laughs> And if he ever gets loose, he'll go after the children first. And he turns them into little wooden dolls, which gives him his power. And that ugly little rascal is still alive down there. <laughs> he can only be awakened on the night before Halloween. Like tonight. When a whorl. Like you. Places his hand on a tree, like this, and says, Yea, I call thee forth, Trantor. But what are the chances of that happening? They are. Isn't that a little chanty? I mean, this is Halloween, the night when all the creepy things are supposed to stock the earth. It deals with demons. Demon resurrection and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween, have you forgotten? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat. So here we are. Here it is. The last episode of our Trick or Trash Month. And not only is it the last episode, but it's our hundredth episode. Spooktacular extravaganza. It's actually the last episode of Movie Dumpster. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the plan all along, right, Connor? <laughs> We're talking about one of my favorite, probably my favorite Halloween movie tonight. I know I said on Night of the Demons that that was my favorite, but... And, and you said the same thing on Trick or, Tr Trick or Treat. I did, I did. I'm pretty sure it's this one. But also, to add to the festivities, we have special guest Pissy Miles with us from My Spooky Gay Family. How you doing, Pissy? I'm wonderful. It's such a privilege to be a special guest. And to be fair, I am a special guest on anything I guest on. After all those rides on that short bus, I am the <laughs> most special guest. The most special. <laughs> uh, what's funny is that the first time your name uh, came across my eyeballs with the the Donald Trump hearing. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what like, a day. What is it? Is that picture of like you like getting like, I think they get to run a metal detector over you. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> yeah, that fucking homophobic <laughs> picture that they put in the New York Post. Yeah. They're like, I was walking around all day looking gorgeous, and the one photo they put on the front of the goddamn newspaper was me looking at my feet, which I can't see, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> so that all of my chins are highlighted. I was like, what? I was like, who took this photo and who approved it? This is rude, and it is uh, a hate crime as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> So yeah, as 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 everybody has seen that we've dropped on our uh, all the social media stuff, the prize pack for this amazing last episode is huge. Okay, we got a replica Miak jar that I designed myself. We got a Trantor uh, vinyl figure sculpted by Tom Hensley and created by the Plastic Geek, um, and. They actually, the Plastic Geek actually dropped uh, his Trantor figure in green and orange. This one that he did for us is exclusive. Uh, it's a purple uh, Trantor figure that is UV reactive, and it, it's one of a kind. It's the only one you can get that, that exists, and it's in this prize pack. Uh, we also got the t-shirt, the pin, the stickers, the... the uh, the air freshener um, and the your, the trick or, trick or trash uh, bucket of goodies, all that stuff, plus the uh, candle from Goblin Head Candle Works, all of that stuff is going to be in that prize pack. So you do not, <laughs> if you've been listening or you haven't, or you just started listening, you do not want to miss that one this week. Uh, definitely listen for that code word, get those entries in, and uh, see if you can win that. I, I also want to just comment on uh, this because uh, 
Joe has the most uh, film accurate Miak jar, by the way. Just want to put that out there. I'm very uh, anal about that kind of thing, screen accuracy. So <laughs> I appreciate that someone cares. There you go. Up until today, I didn't know what the fuck a Miak jar was. So. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting Connor hasn't seen this fucking movie. Wait, before we get into that, I want to just say congratulations to last week's winner on the pit. Um uh contest congratulations thanks for playing and again thank you thank all of you for playing and participating and and um and yes. listening uh we really appreciate it it's super fun i'm glad I, I hope you guys are having a good time listening and and playing um and we love doing this kind of stuff for you so um and, and a lot of people are entering so yeah oh a ton we appreciate that too yeah i can't keep up i was gonna add to that like i'm at work sometimes and i'll check my phone and it makes me smile from ear to ear just see like a message notification that just says my favorite insult ever, just troglodyte. <laughs> Spoilers, that was the code word for last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm anxiously waiting to see uh, what Joe drops into this episode for the code word. I have, I have a few in my mind that they could be, but I'm just uh, waiting to hear it back after the tape uh, is played. There's so much to choose from for this film, so I'll think of something good. Don't, don't you worry. Oh, I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I guess uh, there's so much to talk about. Um, all right, let's talk about the fact that Connor's never fucking seen this movie, nor has he ever seen an Ernest film. Yeah, well, that's the part that really blew my mind, to be quite honest. Yeah. Not one single movie? No, and, um, so, all right. <laughs> all right. I have my whiskey ready. I'm sitting, waiting patiently. Here we go. Okay. Um, so I've made jokes about my childhood in this, on this show, and how it was, um, uh, a tad limited, and it's sometimes, uh, like, cartoonishly, you know, like, Dickensian-level cruel. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you know, you, you know, had Sam Whipple always coming in there, stealing all your damn toys. Lest we forget. Yeah, Sam Whipple's coming to my house and just taking my fucking Christmas presents, <laughs> just playing them in front of me, and then he's just trashing them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, like, I'm gonna get a little personal for a little bit, um, that joke, uh, isn't very far from some truth. Uh, my mother... Okay, let's talk about my mom for a second. My mom has no pop culture appreciation. Um, she has she does not see the world through any kind of pop culture filter. She has not been to the movies in probably 30 years. Uh, she couldn't name my favorite film if she tried. Uh, and her idea of trying to uh, you know appeal to that notion is to get me... A two, a double VHS set of 2001: A Space Odyssey in the year 2004. Um, <laughs> like, actually, no, I think 2006. I was out of high school, um, and DVDs were, you know, well into their fucking prime. Um, it's because she just didn't care. It's, it's a, you know, a thinly veiled attempt. Well, I can, I'll take that from you. No problem. I'll, I'll put it with my collection. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. It's long gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's coupled with like lots of, um, you know, lots of instances where she had. Little to, you know, no interest in anything I was interested in, um, and I guess uh, just kind of secretly wished that I was my older sister, who was an athlete, so she could have two kids who had names in a plaque somewhere. Um, and so my mom hated everything. She hated the Power Rangers. She hated Ninja Turtles. She hated anything she deemed stupid. And if it was deemed stupid by her, it wasn't allowed in the fucking house. Um, and I distinctly remember, you know, wanting to see Ernest movies. They never came in the house. Um, and... Uh, Stuff I liked of this brand um, was basically ammunition, and if uh, she ever felt like trying to get through to me, to send a message to me, to discipline me or whatever, she would just take something I liked and just trash it or throw it away or just, you know, destroy it. She took an entire box of modeling clay that I had uh, used to build lots of small figurines, and she took it and just threw it in the trash. Sweet. Um, which is uh, really cruel to a kid who's trying to get into the arts. Um, yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah, so when you kind of, when, when the, uh, the filter of your child, like, when the, like I said, the pop culture filter of your childhood is someone who just doesn't appreciate any of it, something like this would never enter, you know, my house. Um, it was bad enough that, like, she told me Power Rangers was, quote-unquote, too violent, um, even though it's the most cartoony shit ever put on film. Yeah, you know, we have a whole bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, and like it's 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 really disheartening to like be a part of a generation that's being defined by several different things. Like 
video games, Power Rangers, uh, skateboards, all kinds of stuff. I'm not saying all of that was something that I was interested in, but sure. it was really, really discouraging and depressing to be around all of this, you know, cultural development and being just, you know, completely left out for like very confusing reasons. Um, and I'm sorry if this is all over the place, but this is kind of touchy. No, you're good. You're good. So yeah, no, I never laid eyes on a fucking earnest movie. Um, and, uh, like I said, I think, the, you know, my mom watches Turner classic movies on repeat all fucking day and probably watches the same 15 Gene Kelly movies all goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> now there's an actor, Gene Kelly. Who the fuck is this Jim Varney? While she sips out of a bottle of cognac and gets, you know, shitty drunk at, at 5 PM. Sure. But now that I've seen, like... I would say, like, the ultimate Ernest movie, I guess. I, In my opinion, but we will get to that. <laughs> what a fucking crime it was that I was not aware of this rubber band of a man. Um, oh, no. Who, <laughs> whose, whose face never stops moving. Um, who's capable of... He's, his fucking acting method is just to go 1,000 miles an hour all the time, anytime, um, and just... Draw your attention towards the screen immediately. Oh, yeah. If that gives away a little bit of my opinion at the end, I'm sorry, but I <laughs> had to get that out of the way. Um, also, this will serve as a means to uh, not really want to bring my mom into the show ever again because her name's come up a lot in therapy. Hi, but I'm going to therapy. You know? <laughs> um, I can't imagine why after this conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, her name's come up, the show has come up, my therapist wants to listen to the show. Oh boy, maybe you should, I don't know, we talk about cum and dicks a lot, I don't know. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they, they might like it. Maybe. I've never brought that up in the, you know, the office, but, like, that's a weird thing to even have to confront. How do you describe to your therapist, yes, yeah, so we talk about this guy <laughs> cum <-da. laughs> You know those Power Rangers I was telling you about my mom wouldn't let me have? <laughs> Oh no! It ties back. Last session, I showed her the uh, the Boingo video, and she was like, "Okay, this is all really cool." Yeah, but how about like people going through portals and then they come out the other side covered and come duck boobs? Any of that ring a bell? <laughs> Never invoked corpse fucker. None of those people. GVD shaking her naked body all over the place. Well, I, I actually, I would proudly uh, uh, pimp GVD everywhere. I go. <laughs> it's your brainchild. Yeah, she's yeah. also an extension of me. So yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to exercise a little demon um, and also kind of tie that hand in hand into why, like, this never came across my eyeballs before. Mm. Um, and now I want to go watch all these movies. I also want to add something else um, that I didn't think about until today. Tyler Perry can go fuck himself. Oh, right. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think we're so vehement about that, dude? Like, when, when we talk about, like, Eddie Murphy and we talk about Jim Varney and stuff, yeah. You want to know why? Because we watched Medea. Uh, a boo, a Medea Halloween, what, two years ago? Yeah, Jesus, that was first season. Two years ago. Yeah. It feels like longer, Connor, because we were in that living room for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Years shaved off my life. Uh, so I used to joke that the Medea movies were following the same trajectory as I knew the Ernest movies were because, like, Medea went to jail and then Medea had a fucking Halloween special. Yeah. Um, and then after we watched, like, when we watched Medea, I was like, this is the biggest fucking cop out I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> And it gets insanely dark. Like, everyone in that movie should be arrested by the end of it. Yeah. Well, it's also that thing. We we even say in that episode, we're like, why the fuck didn't she fight a troll or a zombie or something? Like, Yeah, yeah. They they sell you a premise and then don't commit to it whatsoever and then bail on it as soon as they can. And in this movie, they commit to a premise so fucking hard that by the end of it, I just threw my hands in the air. I was like, this is the best. <laughs> it really is, though. <laughs> So there's that. Okay, yeah, that's all that. That's the big info dump. There we go. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I, I don't know if everyone wants to uh, chime in on this, but, uh, you know, Connor, you bring up a good point about, like, this was your first time uh, with Ernest, uh, you know, somewhat against your own will. I'm almost jealous, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> well, I was going to throw it to the rest of the group here. Uh, what, what was everybody else's first uh, experience with Ernest? I mean, I'll, I'll be sure to... I could throw mine out there if you guys got to think about it for a second, but if anyone wants to jump out and give me theirs, I'm curious now. I'm almost positive this was my first foray that I can remember. Okay. I am positive this was mine. This, I, like, I know the first Ernest movie I ever saw was Ernest Scared Stupid, and honestly, I'm, I mean, I've seen Ernest Goes to School and I've seen Ernest Goes to Prison, but... I could not, like, I couldn't give you a scene from that movie off the top of my head. 
I but I can tell you literally everything that happens in this movie start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> right. I couldn't tell you half of what Jim Varney said because he's just <laughs> like a, he's like a like a wind up toy. Like you just pull the string and he just fucking goes. <laughs> you you got to do multiple viewings, Connor. That's the thing because I watch this movie like I watch it like one and a half times, and like the second viewing. You know, I hadn't seen it, like, in 10 years. And that was another thing. Like, Connor never saw it, but I hadn't seen it, like, in 10 years. What a crime. What are you talking about, 10 (laughs) years? And, and, like, the first time I watched it, I'm like, yeah, like, just what you said, Connor. I'm like, yeah, I basically know what Jim said, but okay. And then on the second viewing, it's, like, all becoming clear to me. I'm like, oh, I got that joke this time. I'm like, that's a lot of words you just said, and you used megabytes wrong. But okay, I love it. (laughs) You will pick up something new each time. I also think that... uh... The the funny thing about watching this as an adult as opposed to watching it as a child is that there are jokes that totally went over my head as a child. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. e- even in the um the Botswanian lumberjack scene, you have like I did not remember him being like we need the high ground and then Ernest goes, "I thought we needed dress shields." And it's like <laughs> that <laughs> that goes way over your head as like a 10 year old but as an adult it's like oh there are a lot of really funny jokes in this that i just did not notice uh i there's two instances in this movie that broke me in half that i was not ready for because they're both cutaway gags and this movie only has two cutaway gags (laughs) and they both got you (laughs) and they're both great and they're both the same thing And and Joe, you're saying it's a crime. I haven't seen it in so long. And I I guess it kind of is. Yeah. But I was always, you know, my Ernest movie growing up was always Ernest uh, Saves Christmas. That was the one I've seen a thousand times. Which is arguably the worst one, in my opinion. (laughs) Oh, shit. Uh, I mean, it's definitely worse than this movie, but I saw it a lot as a kid. That, that's... You know, Pissy, that's my earnest movie that I could tell you every fucking scene, one after another. <laughs> really? I'm shocked. I mean, I'm not necessarily proud of it, per se. I'm just telling you <laughs> like it is. I, I don't even know if I've ever seen it. <laughs> it's worth watching. We might we might check it out eventually on this show, but we're not in a hurry. The last one I think I saw was years ago at my grandmother's, so this had to be freaking like 20 years ago, was we rented on VHS... Uh, Ernest goes to Africa, and even as a kid, it was bad. So I, oh, I'm yeah. afraid to even try to revisit that one. And then that wasn't even the last one. That sounds like you turn it on and you get like something like Home Alone Four. You're like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> All I remember is he was like in Africa. It probably came out around the same time as Ace Ventura Two. Is probably why they did that, if I had to guess. Well, and it's Jim Varney, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah, he's in all of them. So the fact that he's not around anymore yeah makes me upset and the fate of these movies also makes me upset sure and he's the only person who's been earnest right there has been no remake or Ernest jr or any of that bullshit it's only jim varney knock on wood (laughs) and a pox on anyone who fucking tries well also it would be physically fucking impossible to replicate this performance in any which way that would come off as like credible or redeemable i could maybe see it in like a dolomite is my name or a man on the moon kind of scenario like a documentary movie but that's about it but he's so interesting looking and sounding you know what i yeah, mean like, yes. I guess he's a man made of silly putty <laughs> okay like <laughs> you know who could play him he uh he was on this show previously uh john hurt <laughs> <laughs> well maybe i was gonna say french stewart i was seeing if anybody could maybe beat me to the punch oh no french stewart fuck you oh my goodness <laughs> you take that back you shut your dirty mouth <laughs> I could kind of see it. I'm not going to lie. If French Stewart ever plays Jim Varney, I will fucking go down and burn that set down. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be good, but I can kind of see it. No. What are you talking about? You need a pair of glasses, man. <laughs> I would take that as one of the seven signs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of the apocalypse. Yeah. The fucking end times. This is the end, the end of times. I am French Stewart, and I'm going to play Jim Varney in a, in a biopic. Isn't that right, Vern? <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean, Vern? I was Inspector Gadget. It too. Uh, he just turns. He goes. <laughs> I can't even get this joke out. Burn. <laughs> what was that line in Home Alone for? He's like, "Hey, yeah, Vera, Vera, Kevin, Kevin, Vera." But he's like saying that the Vern. I, I don't know what the joke would be. That's that's the line of thinking. <laughs> before um before we get into like the the trivia's, if you will, I do we do have some Patreon questions that I want to get to. What are we putting inside of Clint Howard's butthole this week, everybody? 
Man, you you make it worse than the listeners make it, Connor. <laughs> yeah, Connor always has like these expectations for these. He's like, oh, great, here we go. <laughs> and every time I'm editing an episode, he's like, this is the best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, though. That means they keep getting better. Yeah, it means the bar keeps getting raised. So fucking hit it, baby. What do we got? So yeah, you can uh, head over to that Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash movie dumpster. And sign up for any tier, $2 tier, uh, gets you access to the posts and you become an official dumpster dweller. Uh, $5 tier, you also get a sticker pack and those commentary tracks. We talked about them in the last episode, uh, gave a little sneak peek. We sure did. Uh, but they're coming soon. And uh, that $10 tier, if you want to go all in, become a uh, wizard's house elf, join, join the club in there with Dobby and Creature and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you get you get a movie dumpster T-shirt, a glow in the dark enamel pin, and uh, all the rest. All the all the goods. Plus, you get some behind the scenes stuff. We uh, we had some behind scenes stuff for uh, Tony from Hack the Movies. He just put out Hack of the Living Dead. I was actually watching it. Oh yeah. Uh, a little bit before this recording, and I was cracking up. I saw Joe in there eating <laughs> a bug or something. <laughs> I yeah, I was a zombie. I I, I eat a bug. Spoilers. Um, but yeah, you got to got to go check that out. Hack the Movies on YouTube. <laughs> Hack the Living Dead. Tony's in there swatting zombies away with a fucking push broom. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. The man put in, put himself and his friends into Night, uh, Night of the Living Dead. It's yes. a feature-length fucking escapade. Yes. <laughs> I'm watching it, and I was like, and I'm watching it with my girlfriend, and she's like, is this the whole movie? <laughs> fucking what yeah it's the whole movie and i'm like i don't know i don't know if it is i'm like looking at the runtime i was like it might be the whole movie I'm like, all right i gotta i gotta watch the rest later i got some shit to do <laughs> but it's good check it out um also could just real quick i just wanted to say congratulations to um tony and newt and crystal for their uh gorilla short getting picked for joe bob briggs haunted driving it's pretty fucking rad yes how cool is that it's really awesome so Good on you guys. And uh, so since the topic is coming up now, obviously I'm, I'm going into the uh, the movie dumpster Patreon, but Pissy, you, you've got one, don't you, for uh, My Spooky Game Family? We do. I, uh, I host uh, another spooky podcast called My Spooky Gay Family with my sister Sam. And uh, we have a we just launched our Patreon uh, almost a month ago. <laughs> like next week, it'll be a month. Um, and it is patreon.com slash my spooky gay family. And we have a lot of cool shit. We have watch alongs and we have uh, we call it my spooky gay sleepover where once a month we let patrons of a certain tier kind of come and just have a sleepover with us. And we just did one. Uh, a few days ago and it was mostly us talking about cats so <laughs> it sounds like a blast to me i can get behind that <laughs> wait, wait we, like real real cats or the movie cats oh no real ones like oh we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we, it's like a zoom call so we we let everyone everyone hops on zoom and we all have a spooky gay sleepover where we talk about you know scary stories or or scary movies or what everyone's watching right now or the episodes or the podcast and this time it ended up being that everyone's pets wanted to join so we just <laughs> basically like got to meet all of our listeners pets and it was wonderful it was probably the best sleepover we've ever had that sounds lovely well so far so far <laughs> uh i don't know if you know this pissy but uh, i'm a veterinary assistant so i like i spent the entire last hour of my shift with a stray cat who had just been adopted by someone who just found him in a parking lot oh. um and uh, so there's like a, a jillion pictures I took because this thing like was like, hello, you're my friend now. And just curled up my shoulder and passed out. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what kind of cat was it? It was a tiny little calico named Peaches. Oh, Peaches. This is my cat now. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, come near me and I'll bite your fucking fingers <laughs> off. <this cat." laughs> you reach this cat, you will come back with a stump. But yeah, so I'm assuming uh, people could find that podcast anywhere. Anywhere. We're on uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, Spotify and Stitcher and Pandora and Pornhub, wherever you look. We're <laughs> oh, man, we got to get on Pornhub. We're missing out that market. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. All those views, yeah. Yeah, but Pornhub also hosts like... Pornhub hosts like legitimate content because they're just like we're not gonna take anything down. Why the fuck would we? <laughs> I know. I've seen so many drag artists who put like performance videos up on Pornhub, and I'm like, what do you get from this? <laughs> uh, especially because you know that there are there are definitely people in the Midwest who watch those videos for exactly the reason they went to that website. <laughs> 
Well, I wasn't looking for this, but well, well here we go. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> so it was already out. Here we go. Starting this week, Movie Dumpster can be found on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Pornhub.com slash movie dumpster. I think people who got like uh like illegitimately booted off like some platforms like were invited by Pornhub like, hey, you can come do what you're doing over there and we won't fuck with you at all. Yeah, because like what could you possibly do that they would be like, no, that's not allowed here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we got Patreon questions here. Uh, first, <laughs> anyway, just roll right into it from that. Okay, get him out of here. <laughs> Uh, so our first question comes from Serge Mario, and he says, This may have been asked before, but the fusion earrings from Dragon Ball have found their way into the MDU. Oh, they've been in the MDU, baby. Oh, my God. Gee, I think they have. We, we have many fusion rituals in the MDU. You, you, you take all the Dragon Ball ones, you already got two or three right there. Plus, all, you know, those witch rituals. Uh, I think we've had some uh, movies where people have fused. I mean, The Freaked is a good one. Yes. Uh, but he, he he throws out uh, uh, GVD and Old Lady Hackmore as a fusion. Uh, well, okay. Here's the thing about that. Um, Old Lady Hackmore is like Gandalf to um, to, uh, to GVD Sauron, so yes. I don't approve of that at all. <laughs> See, you just took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, she is the Witch of the South in the in the MDU. Spoilers, that's just, she's been solidified. Eartha Kitt now roams. She's, it's it's fucking Eartha Kitt. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I could kind of see it. It's Eartha, it's, dude, uh, uh, GVD needs, a, needs an equal, you know what I mean? It's fucking Yzma and Catwoman. <laughs> sure. I was going to say GVD and uh, <laughs> Mama Fratelli. Remember, she showed up in Body Mel. If they fused... <laughs> Mama Fratelli is like the semi benign one. Yeah, I I don't really know what powers uh, GVD gains from that, other than being able to infiltrate the uh, Fratelli clan. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure she has. A, she probably already has a skin suit for that. That he could, you know, probably killed Mama Fratelli to get the skin suit. Like we don't even know if she's still, you know, running around the Speed Force. Honestly, it's possible. Who knows? She's on that fucking couch, man. Watching that video, watching that porn video. <laughs> she's that hand doesn't stop moving, man, under that blanket. Dude, she's fucking watching Pornhub, dude. <laughs> she, she went to Pornhub.com <laughs> slash movie dumpster and just Oh yeah, she's what I've been looking for this whole time. Just really gets me wet down there. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh god. Um who's who's like Who's a uh, who we consider like a muscle bound hoss in the in the MDU? Like who's... A, a muscle bound hoss? Oh jeez. <laughs> Come dar, man, or Corpse Fucker. You got two of them right there. Well, Corpse Fucker specifically. Uh, yeah, no, who aren't those two exclusively? I mean, the three flies that work with GVD, you know, Gordy Belcher, uh, they got big and then they started working for his bodyguards. Uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie, I think they were called. If we're talking swole, it would be Corpse Fucker and or Dobby. Well, swole! Yeah. Okay, well, you just dropped that four-letter word there, pal. <laughs> Five, whatever it is. Dobby, come on! It's GVD and she fuses with Swole Dobby, okay? Oh my god, I think the world just fucking uh, implodes, Connor. Basically, her powers is just, it's, it's, it's basically the same, except she just, like, her approach changed entirely. Like, she's just fucking, like, you're sitting there quietly, your door gets kicked across the room, and she's like, take off your clothes! Oh my god. I, I think GVD, if she were to fuse with Dobby, she just turns into Xenu from fucking Dragon Ball Super, the god of uh, of everything <laughs> at that shit. point. She's the fucking green machine. She's gonna tear you in half. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. GVD smush, dude. Yeah. I want to see Gunner and uh, Haggerty fuse. What would that even be? They'd basically be the same. They'd, it would turn into the fucking Tetsuo monster. What are you talking about? <laughs> Okay. D Sean, divide something by zero. What do you get? <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of it that way. It just, they just nullify and zap out of existence. How about you try slamming a revolving door? See so yeah, how that works out. <laughs> um, I mean, we kind of already talked about what would happen with Charnetsky technically, because remember we were talking about him turning into a chicken or, or, mm. or whatnot when he got big. So I think he fused with the chunky chicken, he just turns into a, a large chicken of some kind. He fuses with chunky ch chicken every night, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby comes back with the bucket. We don't know where he puts it. We think he eats it, but we're not sure. He's sitting in the dark with that, washed over with the colors of the television behind him. Everything else is dark. Yeah. I would like Charnetsky to fuse with um, uh, Victor Frankenstein from Frankenstein Unbound. <laughs> By Raw Julia. Oh, see, now you're talking. I'm just imagining like him just like raising his pistol at the end of that movie, like, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> What's murder? What is this? A time telling thingamajig? Can I eat it? You know, you know, if Hurt had the fusion earrings, he wouldn't necessarily use them on himself, but he would like 
He'd take Baldwin and, and uh, Michael Clark, Duncan, you know, Garris, and uh, combine them. I don't know what the hell that turns into. You got Baldwin dolphin diving at people and turn it into sand. It's a fucking sight to behold. See, now you're onto something. Hurt takes those earrings and he's like, he's like the last you see Scuggs, man. He's he's turning people into fucking freaks in his, in his shed. Yeah, well, exactly. He doesn't care. He just wants some more powerful minions. I feel like I feel like our you know our villainous Doctor Buchanan John Hurt would find a time remnant of himself and be like, come here, let's double our intellect. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like the it's like the one except he, instead of killing them he like merges with them exactly there you go that's uh you know he's got to keep his power growing <laughs> consistently oh my god that's how he stays ahead of all these ludicrous demigods we keep establishing on a week-to-week basis uh, what, well you know what speaking about demigods let's go back to gvd for a second but munchie munchie and gvd i think that is a total uh protonic reversal right there oh my god that's like a fucking sex crazed gremlin running around pennywise is afraid of having gvd under his bed okay <laughs> That lady's not down there, is she? Pennywise passes by a sewer and he hears the... <laughs> <laughs> you know what that made me think of randomly, just on a side tangent here real quick? I was talking to Joe like a week ago. I don't even know how we got on this subject topic, but we were talking about Cumdar coming out of drains. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like Pennywise. We were we were talking about, like, because uh, William Atherton's always at the wrong place at the wrong time and somehow always gets splooged with white a big white whatever all over him. Yeah, cum usually. In this case, it's Cumdar. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> we, we're putting him in different situations. Like, you know, he's, like, using the restroom at, like, a at like a 7-Eleven and he's, like, washing his hands and he just gets <laughs> shot with fucking cum through the fucking, through the faucet or like when he's taking a shower, he just turns it on and it just shoots out. Yeah. And it was like an echoey laugh from like the drainage tubes. This is fucking cum doors. <laughs> well, and then you have that scene from It Part 2. Yes. Where that entire room fills with blood, but it's cum this <laughs> yeah. time and you hear this fucking voice cackling. It's a white sea, man. You even see the face floating in the cum. Oh, this show is filthy. Let's see how many more times I could say that word in about five minutes. <laughs> 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 I think we said it about 9,000 on the last episode, so. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, the, you know, that three-letter word I never thought would just uh, be on a podcast on, on the regular that I'm involved with, but hey, here we are. Look, I didn't imagine 75% of this shit would ever be in, like, like my <laughs> constant daily bubble, okay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I had, to, I had to just bring that up because it popped in there, and I was forgetting it otherwise. It just popped in there, man. Yeah, you know, it happens. <laughs> Yeah. What did you do, Sean? Anyway. Um, unless we got a, any other uh, picks real quick, I'm going to jump to Serge's second question. You got you got any uh, last-minute uh, picks there, anybody? Ernest and uh, Clint Howard, maybe? Well, Ernest is joining the ranks tonight, so we got to give... We got to... <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get into that character first. Yeah, that that, that might be a bit of a spoiler for. Uh, a, actually, I'm just gonna spoil it right now. That that was Dustin Elkin's response to the question: Was Clint Howard and Jim Varney get the get the fusion treatment? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry, Dustin, I took the words out of your mouth and subconsciously. As one third of the keepers of the lore here, no, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a very specific place I want Jim Forney to go. Okay, but we hope that answers your question, Serge. Uh, I'm sure we could uh, revisit this at a later date. Uh, he also says, uh, you guys are making programming on an all-night Screamorama and get to fill one slot each, including Pissy, of course. Hi, Pissy. And, uh, I know he is a fan oh. of my spooky Gabe family. Yes. We've talked to him about it before. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Serge is a good dude. I mean, everybody is are good people <laughs> <laughs> that support us, but everyone are good. So he's basically asking, what's what's our quadruple feature? Who, what is everybody picking for this? What are, what are we thinking? Well, we have to know what everyone else is putting in. You can't just... Well, I don't know. He doesn't say. I, I, w w do we have a theme? I don't know. Is it, What is it? All Night Spooky Fest? What's it called? Oh, Screamorama. Excuse okay. me. Oh. Screamorama. Okay, so obviously it's a horror-themed movie night. Sure, yeah, that's true. I was going to say, if if there's no theme, let's just go with cum. <laughs> <laughs> We're already on a roll. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Just pour it in the popcorn, hand it out to people. I, I can see it. <laughs> Six hours of cum. I can't come up with a movie that fits that qualifier, so... <laughs> uh, Screamorama. Jeez, that's so hard. I, you know what? This comes back to, like, what what's your favorite movie kind of thing? You know what I mean? Mm, Where, like, sure. I don't know... It, it's such a difficult thing because it changes, like, at any given time, right? Um, I'm going to go with one that we're more than likely doing next year, um, so I won't give away too much about it, but um, uh, Pulse, 
the Japanese version, Cairo. Okay. Because I think that is, uh, I think it's a really important horror film, and I think more eyeballs need to be on it, and I mm. think uh, people need to give it a chance, not just as a ghost movie, but as a really interesting essay on depression and loneliness. Hmm. Um, and I think it's uh, criminally under-discussed and underrated, and I would love to have an opportunity to shove that in people's faces and be like, fucking watch it. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I'm going to say only because I literally just watched it recently and it just jumped out at me at this question. Uh, g- going deep here with Deep Red. Okay. A little Profondo Rosso in there? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of screaming in that movie. The, the main character's kind of an asshole, but the rest of the film uh, is pretty phenomenal. Um... The only thing I, I had, I told Joe when I had seen it for the first time, I was like, I wish I saw this in theaters for the first time because <laughs> the ability to rewind kind of ruins one of the big twists at the end of the film. Why would you rewind it? I I was like, oh shit, I saw something. Let me rewind that shit. Let me double check. Oh my god, don't you if don't ever do that again. <laughs> uh, I'm not making any promises because I absolutely will. Come on, I'm a rewinder, man. <laughs> you just you spoiled the fucking movie for yourself. <laughs> Oh, well. It just kept me guessing the rest of the film. <laughs> no, you didn't. You were like, oh, it's I know who it is. Well, I was jumping between two characters because I didn't really want to focus on it heavily. It was more so just like, oh, yeah, there's a face there. So brilliant, though. It's very good. I think that's definitely one of Argento's best easy. Oh, it's it's a great movie. I'm, st- I'm stuck between two movies. I'm not sure which one I'm going to put in yet. One is actually... A movie that I kind of stumbled upon literally today (laughs) that uh, I was just kind of surfing through Amazon Prime uh, looking for something to watch. And I came upon this movie called The Selling. Have you guys heard of it? No. 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 It's this it's an independent kind of comedy horror film that was released in 2011 and it was written by a a comedian named Gabriel Diani and he's part of a, a comedy team called Diani and Divine and both of those comedians are in it it's uh Gabriel Diani and Etta Divine is is his comedy partner and it's this horror comedy about a uh a real estate agent who's just kind of like shy and timid and and he's like too nice for his own good and he is trying to sell a he's trying to flip a haunted house to sell it and it's a really I really enjoyed it I was surprised how much I enjoyed it um I I thought it was really funny and well done and uh interesting and and not terribly scary which is why I'm kind of torn about throwing it in a scare fest but um I that is kind of I'm I'm selling it to anyone who will buy it now. I'm like I'm obsessed with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's almost like the movie taught you a lesson. It really did. It taught me uh <laughs> it taught me to watch more bad movies on Amazon Prime. That is what <laughs> that, that is what uh been there. I I watched another one the other night called Santa Jaws and that is definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's almost as good as Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. Um, (laughs) almost. Oh, no. Um, I have a second answer before, uh, Joe, you went, uh, and this should... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you say that, I need to know what the fuck Santa Jaws is about. (laughs) (laughs) It is exactly what it sounds like. So does he deliver presents? What, What? He does not. So... Basically, it's a, it's about this kid who is an aspiring comic book creator, a, a comic illustrator and writer. And for Christmas, he gets a pen to draw his comics. But the, the pen is like magic or cursed. I, it's kind of I, I don't really remember. Um, and it makes his comics come to life. And he is in the middle of writing this gotcha. comic about a shark called Santa Jaws. And so the, the shark comes to life and starts killing his entire family. That sounds like that uh, Tales from the Crypt episode, yeah. Corman's Calamity. And I think there was a bone chillers like that, too, where the kid like draws pictures in a book and like all the monsters come out. Anyway. Yeah, it's a pretty common uh it's a pretty common trope, I think. I like it. Okay. That that's that sounds way better than what I thought you were gonna say. Yeah, it actually <laughs> sounds creative. I'm surprised. I can <laughs> I can I can't imagine that being better than uh anything you could have come up with. <laughs> I you know what I well, all right, sorry, Connor, what were you saying? Uh my follow up answer if I didn't go with pulse is something much more recent and something that Serge will appreciate. It's fucking terrified. Um, from uh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, 
Uh, That's a good one. It's a horror film from uh, Venezuela uh, that I've talked about on the show a lot. It is fucking insane. Uh, deals with like high strangeness and some kind of like paranormal phenomenon that I really can't properly explain at this point. I've seen the movie three times. Um, but the the less you know about it, the better. Um, because you're just kind of left going like, what the fuck, the whole time. Okay, we need to do that mini story because I I have some shit to say about that movie, but I do like it. Yeah, it's 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 it was a complete surprise. I found on Shutter one night. Uh, I was up at like one in the morning. I was like, Ugh, I can't sleep. And I turned it on and it, what was supposed to be background noise became like an hour and a half of being like legit ter- uh, scared and like surprised with this fucking movie. And then I had a- it's definitely not a movie to put on before bed. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then it had a jump scare that fucked me up for days. <laughs> um, I'm going to choose anguish. Uh, from 1987, uh, with Zelda Rubinstein and uh, Michael Lerner. I'm picking it because it's one of those flicks that, um, again, you don't really hear about and is criminally like underrated or underappreciated, rather. And actually, our friends over at Flickers from the Cave have just have, uh, reviewed it, I believe. Um, but it's one of those films where it's like a film within a film, kind of going on it's almost like a demons kind of thing where it takes oh, place in like a movie okay. theater and these people are watching are watching the movie and then it the, the, you know what happens in the theater reflects what's happening in the movie sort of um it's fucking great it's very very good it's very um creepy and well put together and the way that they do that kind of movie in the movie thing is uh very slick and it's 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 a good flick it's a great flick and i think it'd be fun to watch with a bunch of people too so if we're doing a a scream a scream festorama or whatever um that would be a good one to add so that's my pick good choice cool we hope those uh answers are what you're looking for Serge. we're gonna mosey on down to dustin elkins I already touched base with Dear Dustin. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Dustin. But he asks, which Ernest movie would you like to see a direct sequel to? Kind of like Halloween 2 is the same night as Halloween. Okay, that's a little difficult, um, because right before you added that little part at the end, I was going to say this one. Um, Well, he he does end that in a question mark. I may have read that without a question mark uh, inference, but I think he's just... uh, He's, he's just asking, what do you think? Uh, my answers are extremely limited because it's the only artist I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this one. <laughs> well, w- when you do something like uh, like Christmas or jail or camp like or school or army or Africa, I mean, you can easily have a sequel that's just like, Ernest goes back to school or back to Africa. I don't know about that. Ernest goes to jail again? <laughs> or, yeah, why not? When the whole plot was he got, like, switched with his fucking, this guy that looked like him, and by the end of the movie it's all wrapped up? Yeah, well, yeah, but what if he gets out again? Well, I mean, he could go to jail for something else. He'd go to jail for, like, tax evasion. I don't, I don't expect Ernest to pay his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> He's barely getting by. He's got, like, that Pee Wee Herman playhouse house Ernest goes to the asylum and he's it's all of his multiple personalities inside a, yeah a rubber room I think that's that's honestly the sequel to Ernest Saves Christmas because he's telling everybody how he was in the sleigh and he knows Santa Claus he's friends with Santa Claus it's that guy Joe who turns into him at the end and he just gets locked up and he's put away for good well he's validated in this movie because the people are like what are you talking about fucking trolls sure uh I, yeah, my sequel to Ernest Scared Stupid would be called Ernest the Longest Halloween <laughs> The Long Halloween. Yeah, exactly. You're playing The Long Halloween, and it would pick up exactly where this one left. Turns out Eartha Kitt's a witch, and she just resets the night, and a whole bunch of new fucking, you know, Halloween-y shit happens. Yeah, not trolls. What is it this time? Vampires? Deadites. Dead- <laughs> oh, my God. Jim Varney versus the Evil Dead? Sign me the fuck up for that. <laughs> Ernest versus Evil Dead. Wow, not not your regular brand zombies. Ones that are actually a problem. He cuts his fuck... <laughs> instead of a chainsaw, he's got a fucking egg beater for a hand? Probably. <laughs> Yeah, and like he's. Can you imagine him just like j- just fucking Jim Varneying up the entire time while someone's like, "I swear you saw," and he's like, "Well, <laughs> Jim Varney better call. Uh, he better call Lionel if that's all he's got to work with." 
Yeah, he would have some shit like like a cheese grater and just like kill a fucking deadite with a cheese grater somehow, you know? Accidentally, tr like literally trip into like some kind of like horrific violent victory against one of these things. Like pick up a chainsaw and be like, I didn't want to use this and then just throw it behind him. <laughs> and then it's revved up and it lands in a deadite's head and it just saws it in half and he's just like, well. I'm mad that we don't have this now. <laughs> he's just covered in blood by the end of the film. That That is a great visual of him just like in a gore flick, just uh, yeah. er earning in street trash. Imagine that one. Why are all these dangerous weapons lying around? He just fucking throwing them. <laughs> and then he gets transported to medieval England. <laughs> oh, I'll be into it now. This is my boomstick, Vern. Know what I mean? <laughs> but he uses, but he uses the Necromaticon to turn um uh rip. What is it? Uh uh rimshot. He turned rimshot into like a fucking grizzly bear. Like, <laughs> oh jeez, it's like reanimator, <laughs> but Jim Varney oh and Ernest. <laughs> Rimshot, like, dies, and he brings it back. I don't want to see the movie where Rimshot dies. That's not... That doesn't appeal to me. Neither do I. Yeah, me either. This movie almost hurt my feelings. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would be... I would I would watch an, uh, uh, an Evil Dead Ernest crossover. I think, Fuck I yeah. think if there was going to be... If there was a, if there were Deadites, the movie would have to be called Army of Dorkness. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I'm selling it. Just, just you have the exact same art of, uh, you know, Bruce Campbell that they do on, <laughs> on all the posters and everything, but Jim it's Jim Varney with like the open oh, shirt God. and everything, but it's the vest and the hat. I love this so much. I'm, s I'm so upset that I can't have this movie now. <laughs> I know. Just the scene when he has to like fight like his evil half, and there's all those like little uh, ashes, but they're earnest, like running around the fucking cabin. <laughs> You're a good Ernest. I'm bad Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good little two shoes. Oh my God, but he would play it so good though, because it'd be that alternate ego from <laughs> Ernest Goes to Jail. Oh yeah, exactly. Because he would commit three thousand percent more than anyone would ever ask him to. Oh man, he might be the only person that could have done that as much justice as Bruce Campbell did. Like really, like like thinking on it right now. Oh yeah, no, easy. That lines up. Uh, I pick that. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Me too. Uh, nothing tops that. Our, our final question comes from Matt Collins, and he just has to say, is MIAC a real thing? And if so, where do I invest? It is now. It sure is. You can get it in our giveaway pack. <laughs> <laughs> so listen for that code word. And he's already invested. He's in the Patreon already. He is, yeah. That's what you call a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not real. It's not a thing. I wish it was, but it's not. But if I had to wager a guess at what Miak would be, I always, I always thought that Miak was like a jam, some kind of jam, right? Something made from like berries or something. I that was my immediate thought was some kind of fruit preservative or something. Yeah, some kind of fruit preserve, especially because it comes in a fucking cheese crock. Like, a yeah, it comes in a like, a, like a. a I don't know, like some clay jar. <laughs> yeah, it's a stoneware crock. I assumed it was like yak saliva. Oh. <laughs> Me yak. It's it's what gotta be fuck? something disgusting. <laughs> no, it's cum. It's yak cum. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, there you go. It's yak cum. That's what it is. <laughs> Just lean all in into the oh yak. It's fresh. When a yak sneezes, oh. it releases a small amount of meak. <laughs> oh. It's extract? That's what it is. Oh my it's god, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking sweating. Yak extract. Oh my god. That's why the troll gets all fucking bent. He's like, me yak? Oh no. I would be disgusted too. Get that away from me, man. <laughs> so I think the answer is, Matt, if you get your hands on a yak and you can get some kind of device hooked up to the nose or a bucket in the vicinity, you might have some on your hands. Quite literally. And call Jim Carrey so he can do the mating call so it'll come over to you. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. This is what you do. You go on your favorite social media app. You listen for that secret code. And you send it to us. And you'll be entered to win some me yak. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could do all that. Or you could get a yak. And <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> drag it along like Jamie trying to drag that cow to the pit. Drag it along past by Jamie and Grandma on the wheelchair. It takes such a long time. You know, Jamie's got some meak under his bed. He sure does. Yeah, he's got a whole sock of it. <laughs> but that, but that's Patreon questions. I think uh, that does it. Yeah, that wraps it up. Just real quick. Okay, so there's not there's not too much to this. I just want to bring a couple a couple things up. So the director John Cherry has directed every earnest film 
with the exception of Ernest Goes to School. What are they in chronological? Like, what's the order of the films? Um, so, so the order of the films go. Okay, so before there, <sighs> Ernest was a a gimmick for this commercial series, right? Yeah, I I knew him as that, but I knew that from like um. Other pop culture podcasts like Laser Time and stuff. Sure, like he would he would, he would do these commercials, um, and you know it became like a big thing with Vern. Like Vern, it was like a POV of Vern, and he would like go around and Ernest be like, "Hey Vern, I fixed your fucking <laughs> car or whatever," and then it like explodes or something, you know. Um, but it starts there, and then it kind of turns into like a bet, like a greatest hits. Of Ernest and Vern, like oh, it's a, it's my family family photo album or whatever, and that's like a little short film and or movie, and then um the first film where Ernest is featured with all of his like different personalities and stuff is called uh, Doctor Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. What the fuck? What? <laughs> yeah, which I've never seen. Um, I have a rip of it. I don't own it. Um, but I think you could probably get it off YouTube. Maybe I'm sure it's, if it's it's on the internet somewhere. If you can find it, definitely watch it because it's like the beginnings of all of these bits that are very prevalent. I mean, in all of the Ernest movies, but specifically uh, the one we're talking about today, uh, he has he has honed them uh, perfectly <laughs> by the time this film comes out. But it's interesting to see them in their kind of like infant stages. It's it's great. If I was to like attempt without that knowledge, if I was to attempt to like track down the earnest like filmography the moment that title came across my face like oh that's clearly irrelevant that has nothing to do with this <laughs> like <laughs> the fuck's that even mean well he also plays dr otto too so Ernest is a character within the film um but the actual Ernest movies start with Ernest goes to camp okay it's Ernest goes to camp Ernest saves christmas uh, there's a short called Ernest Goes to Splash Mountain because we're doing a lot of Disney stuff, uh, especially John Cherry. Well, they were dis- it was a Disney uh, production. Property. Yeah, it was. Um, then comes Ernest Goes to Jail. Then comes Scared Stupid. Ernest Rides Again. Ernest Goes to School. Slam Dunk Ernest. Ernest Goes to Africa. And Ernest in the Army was the was the final Ernest movie. Ugh. I think I saw that one, too. That one actually sucked, too. Ernest Goes in the Army. I saw it on the shelf. Never watched it ever. Sure. I I remember watching Ernest Goes to Africa with my buddy Damon, with our buddy Damon. He's like, oh, my God, we got to watch this, blah, blah, blah. So we watched it, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't wasn't good at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They 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 basically are like the uh, full moon problem. Where they just like after a certain year they started to take a shit. Yeah. But Jim was uh, still making bank on that character, so they kept making him. I guess it's like one of those things. Like everything after the early '90s just is not good anymore for whatever reason. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I'm also happy for Jim Varney in that like one of his last roles that I think like most people might know him as before he died is in Toy Story and that performance is immortal like and yeah slinky dog as I'm watching this I'm like he's a fucking slinky of a man and then like the second that thought crossed my head I was like he played a slinky dog <laughs> 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 well the the thing with Jim Varney is he's a classically trained actor um and he always wanted to do like serious stuff and then did the earnest stuff and that's what caught fire man and like you know he's not an idiot he's a great comedian too and an actor like first of all he's he's a divine gift to physical comedy oh yeah and on the on the on the idea that he's a classically trained actor like dude tobin bell is a shakespearean actor and he is now uh like he's rejuvenated his career by lying on the floor in a puddle of blood for 90 minutes okay so <laughs> <laughs> right exactly there's this clip I'm sure you can find. I mean, again, it's on YouTube, but it's it's uh, Jim Varney like reciting Shakespeare. Oh my god! Yeah. And then at the end of the clip, he like turns to the camera, and goes, "Know what I mean?" <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. It, it's perfect. And again, like the best. I think the best display of his acting chops. There's a little bit in this movie, but specifically, Ernest goes to jail when he plays like the nefarious. Uh, well, what's his name? Ah, uh, I was actually looking it up earlier. I forget though. It's escaping me. Uh, I forget what it is, but he is just so fucking sinister. Like, I would love, I would have loved to seen him play a serious role like that, like in a in a real way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not for like comedic purposes. Agreed. But he never he never gets the chance. He's he's always doing Ernest <laughs> or Slinky Dog. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you you want to see him stick around long enough to get picked up by Marvel and be a villain? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who you play. <laughs> Vulture. 
Boom. I was just gonna say Vulture. <laughs> No, he would be fucking dope as Vulture, though. Like, especially playing it serious. He could twist his face to make him look like f just fucking weird and old and evil. Holy shit. And he wouldn't even need makeup because his face is just, you know, just, it's, he's got 7,000 more muscles in it than the rest of us do. I think you guys are just overthinking this. You know he would just be Ernest in the M MCU. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just Ernest in the MDU. Send him through a uh, time with the fucking Pym Particles. <laughs> <laughs> He's part of the team that fix uh, Endgame. Oh, you came back. Oh, you, you came back with two more Spider-Man. Oh, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Think I'm afraid of Tobey Maguire? He's 50 years old. He's J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> he could be. Actually, I'm kind of into that. I would kind of love if in the, in the Marvel Universe, he just, he was one of his characters, but he was the older kind of like Jewish woman with the neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she was a super villain. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Worse than anyone. She can. She doesn't need any gloves. She can just snap her fingers and everyone's dead. I think that would be the perfect villain. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god! god. Wait, she's, god. She's, she's, she's Granny Goodness from DC. Um, who's like an envoy of fucking Darkseid. <laughs> Oh God! You always fucking whip out that DC character. I mean, she just keeps like talking down to people, and they just like pull a gun out and shoot themselves because they just can't take the uh, the, the verbal beat down any longer. Uh, you get everybody who wants to see Granny Goodness. She is in Harley Quinn season two, and she's awesome. <laughs> well, she's she's also in I think the old animated Justice League. Just take it all the way back. Hanging out with fucking Ragman. I don't 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 slam Ragman. <laughs> He's wearing he's wearing magical rags, okay? So unfortunately Jim was taken from us in two thousand. Fucking lung cancer is constantly is constantly rolling around and just like just felling like all these like fantastic pop culture icons. Well he did smoke his ass off. Uh, he did. Yeah. Because you don't get that voice from you know, from birth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was only fifty. It is really sad. I you know, I always would have loved to have seen once he got into like his sixties, I would love to see what would have happened if he had like kind of become part of the Tim Burton family. Okay. I feel like wouldn't he have been great as like I I could imagine him in like Sleepy Hollow or any one of those movies. I think he would have been a really, really great uh character actor outside of the confines of Ernest. I guess he could have been in that too. Yeah, and there's a good track record of comedy actors like transition to horror with like fantastic results. Um, one Hour Photo with Robin Williams is one of the most terrifying, uncomfortable movies I've ever sat through, and it's mostly because Robin Williams, who is like my hero, first of all, um, who is also like I would describe as a rubber band of a man, kind of just constant, you know, kinetic energy, is this subdued, creepy voyeur. Uh, in that movie, um, who has a nightmare that fucks with me to this day. <laughs> um, but yeah, like Jim Varney as in like uh, in horror or um, or other like 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 you said like character actor roles, reason like weird genre roles uh, would be really interesting. So scooting right along, we got we got the Kyoto Brothers on special effects here. If anybody was wondering why some of these trolls look like killer clowns from outer space, <laughs> there's your answer. <laughs> that that hadn't even occurred to me until this second. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. Uh, the Kyoto Brothers. I mean, what, what, what can I say? The mat. They're like contemporary masters of of the craft, um, and with their stop motion and and all of their practical effects. We got Killer Clowns, uh, the Critters, uh, the Land of the Lost TV show for Nickelodeon. The the uh, the live action one. Uh, they did stop motion for Screamers, um, the one with Peter Weller. I fucking love that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It, it, they've done so much great stuff. Even if, like, I walked away with this movie not enjoying it, uh, I could never, ever sit back and be like, and the special effects are bad. No, bullshit. The fucking effects on these, on these uh, trolls are awesome. <laughs> Every one of them. <laughs> and they're all unique. They're amazing. They are. A Trantor scared, scared the shit out of me as a kid. I, and I will openly say that to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> He's creepy as hell. Uh, he, he exacerbated my fear of COVID-19 because, like, every time I see him on screen, he is just a boogery <laughs> COVID mess, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to sneeze on you? He's got two fucking noses. How do you cover that? With a big mask, I guess, right? He's all head. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. His fucking head is, like, four feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> He's all head. He's like a giant Mr. Potato Head. To, okay, so here's a weird thing. Uh, I was watching the intro credits, which we're going to get to in like two seconds. But like, 
Um, the it's it had two people credited for music, but on IMDb there was only one person credited, uh, and it's Shane Keister, which I just thought was strange. But um, music's good in this one. No complaints this mm, time. <laughs> oh, it's fucking great! It's fucking great. Everything from like the scary bits to this to 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 the uh, the opening like. Uh, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's it's the theme. The Ernest Scared Stupid theme is fantastic. It doesn't feel out of place, like with the pit. That was, I think, a thing me and Connor definitely had a big problem <laughs> with. Was that, especially that montage scene in the middle, the kill montage with that circus music. <laughs> well, yeah, and like the pit sounds like it was composed by Daffy and Donald Duck on opposing pianos, like <laughs> <laughs> in three days on 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 a worksheet, basically. In three days in a room where it's just like they're just increasing the temperature every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very like seven whimsical seventies. You guys uh, hate that shit, but it's great in this movie. Uh, whatever you want to call it, it works really well. So yeah, plot crunch. Uh, Pissy, would you like to would you like to plot crunch this film? Uh. Ernest is an idiot because he, <laughs> <laughs> because his ancestors were cursed by a, a troll that liked to steal children. And so he accidentally releases this troll from its cursed uh, grave and must fuck it up to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of the best guest plot crunches of all time on this show. Accurate, too. <laughs> Ernest is stupid. <laughs> The thing about this movie I like a lot is the plot because I haven't seen the other movies, but I'm assuming they're like they're set they're somewhat grounded in like what you could call a reality or like reality. Ah! And, I mean, but you know, within the limitations of like physical comedy, we're like you know uh, the EPWU, the Ernest P. World <laughs> Universe. Like, let's be honest, there's some weird uh, Ernest ass uh, stuff going on in every one of these movies. Yeah, but. Like I said about Medea, like, that movie teases you with the idea of, like, hey, the Medea movies might actually do something fucking insane. Oh, sure. Um, and this is, like, I, I don't know, it's weird, it's, like, it's a good, it's a dumb, it's, like, it should be a silly kids movie, and then it just goes off the fucking rails. It, it takes itself very seriously, while not at all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and then by the end of it, you're like, I can't believe half of this is happening. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Yeah. <laughs> and the beauty of it is that he, he is this, like, totally over the top crazy out of this world character but so much of the world he exists in isn't and that's kind of what makes right. it so yeah. amazing is that he's he's it, he's basically living in his own dream it's like elvira or uh or, or any one of those characters that you fall in love with that is a peewee is the same way it's the reason you fall in love with these people because right they just are not living in the same world that the rest of us are yeah you're you're having coffee the diner and a cartoon man walks in like yeah <laughs> but it's also like that thing where like a lot of movies screw this up and we, we call it out on this show but this movie i mean we're going to talk about it for for the, for the foreseeable future uh but but Ernest, uh, yeah, Jim Varney plays him as this whack job character, but everybody in the movie treats him as a real human being. They, everyone thinks he's annoying as fuck. He's like Urkel to them. But it, the, no one thinks like what he's doing is out of the realm of believability. My favorite thing about the Ernest character that everybody perceives him as is that they're like, aren't you that world kid? <laughs> right. And he's a fucking 40-year-old man. <laughs> Uh, so we kick off we kick off this movie like right out of the fucking gate we're already kicking it up and it's this amazing it, I think this is like one of the best like intro to any Halloween movie yeah right up there with uh, Night of the Demons for sure right up there with Night of the Demons for sure but in a totally different way right right you should uh someone should lay the uh, the reanimator theme over this opening scene <laughs> <laughs> I think he just suggested it the guy who's gonna do it right so yeah you know, some yeah somebody who's me <laughs> that's somebody's you sir um so this so the, it kicks up and it's just so great. It's just Ernest doing his thing. This man doesn't have to say a word and he's fucking hilarious. <laughs> okay, he's making all these crazy faces and and it's just so much. This whole sequence is just so much fun to watch. It's like it's like you get a bonus music video when you watch this fucking movie right in the beginning. And you know it sets the mood for the rest of the film. It, like you know what you're getting yeah. into right away. I would say it even kind of warms you up, tenderizes you, if you will. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and I got a list here that I pulled off of some, you know, fandom website, so take it for, uh, you know, it might not be credible, but it's got the list of all the movies they show here, because Artis is reacting to all these clips on screen. I'm assuming, you know, movies that were royalty-free, they didn't have to spend a lot of money, if any, on. 
I'm just going to read them all. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> a Nosferatu, White Zombie, Phantom from Space, The Brain from Planet Arras, or however the fuck you say that. Arrows. <laughs> yeah. The Screaming Skull, Missiles on the Moon, The Hideous Sun Demon, The Giant Gila Monster, The Killer Shrews, Battle Beyond the Sun, and finishing it off with the 1960 version of Little Shop of Horrors. I did not see Jack Nicholson in there, but I wasn't really <laughs> looking for him. Um, the uh, the Screaming Skull was featured on Mission Science Theater, and that movie came with an ad. Um, I think it was in the theaters that if you died of fright during the movie, you were you were you were you were given a free coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say refund. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they put that in the coffin with the body. Yeah, we gave him his money back too. Here's your, here's your dollar fifty, kiddo. Take it, take it to the grave. They put two silver dollars on your fucking eyes. <laughs> we'll see you later. I love the idea of them just approaching your corpse with like, I'm sorry, sir, and just putting your ten dollar bill back into your fucking shirt. <laughs> All right, get him out of here. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> but in the uh, Mr. Science Theater episode, uh, Servo tries to fake his death to get a free coffin, and then halfway through, he's tired of the the, the phone process, and he's like, he's like, I, you know what? I got better. I'm fine now. I don't want the coffin. <laughs> he's all better now. PS ten dollars in 1965 would get you into like fucking twenty movies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey man, you gotta get that kiss coffin somehow. You just gotta die for it. <laughs> He was like emblazoned with like Gene Simmons' face. Yeah, who else? <laughs> it ain't gonna be Paul Stanley. Maybe yeah, it's your choice, right? You get to pick one of the four Kiss members. Maybe. Also, I I totally believe a Kiss coffin exists. Oh, they do. I'm not just pulling this out of my ass, man. Isn't James Brown buried in the Kiss coffin? I think he might be. Or was it? It was a gold or some shit, right? Like 24 karat gold. I, I don't know, but yeah, Connor. No, Kiss coffins are a real thing. Google it again. Uh, uh I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, are you serious? They, this is a big joke for years that they've had these things. There's, <laughs> speaking of, and then we can move on. Uh, this one landscaping company in my neighborhood has this big ass truck on the back, and it has uh, Gene Simmons with the fucking rose in his mouth. It's some kind of landscaping. Gene Simmons landscaping. I don't know. I'm sorry. What? He step. He steps out, and he's like, "Y'all are playing psycho circus uh, on a lawnmower." As he starts fucking cutting the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you need to find wherever that fucking logo is and that needs to go up on the instagram because i need to see this shit okay well the next time they pull up the street uh, you know down the street from my house i'll go out and take a damn picture of the truck uh, uh don't worry about it fellas i don't have covid trust me i gotta take a picture of your stupid van if they have a kiss van a kiss graphic on their van i don't think they give a shit about covid i mean that's how i got covid i took a picture of a gene simmons truck so so uh so the movie kicks off um in briarville Missouri, Missouri, uh, a long time ago. And Rebel Stiltskin was there, and he was getting uh, cursed by the locals. And Re <laughs> <laughs> Yep, this little girl's running from Rebel Stiltskin. No, she's running from Trantor the Troll. Um, and I guess uh, the, there's a posse that, that uh, comes and, and captures uh, Trantor, and they stick him in a fucking hole, and they bury him under a giant oak tree. And wouldn't you know it, Ernest P. Worrell's uh, ancestor, Phineas Worrell, is there. And it's Jim Varney, but he's in, like, this, like, 1800s garb. His Ichabod crane outfit. Yeah, and he's like, And if a virgin lights a black flame candle, then this troll will go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just came to this realization a little while ago. Do you think the P in Ernest P. Worrell is Phineas? Phineas. I was wondering that when I was watching it. I was like, God damn, they like, that's like got to be a subtle thing, right? That just dawned on me. Yeah, I, I like that. See, it's that it's that kind of thing is why this movie is so good and why it works, because everybody gives a shit. Even that stupid little detail makes sense, you know? And I I had another realization, and I hope I'm not jumping too far ahead when I when I bring this up. But um, no, you're good. It's kind of implied that the last time this troll was kind of out and about and cruising, old lady Hackmore was there oh yeah right. that's yeah i was i was just thinking the same thing and i was like how old is this hooker she is <laughs> so old she's gotta be like a hundred and something years old right she's like 200 years old that's why i said she's a witch <laughs> yeah because those outfits that are her uh friends slash siblings have on are definitely uh old as hell zachary binks ass kind of outfits <laughs> 
she walked right off the set of the Vivitch and walked right <laughs> onto it. No, I, I have a I have a different movie in which she walked off set from, but I'll wait until she actually shows up in the film to reveal that. <laughs> but you're right, uh, Pissy. That it, I was thinking the same thing when uh, that resolves itself at the end. I'm like, wait a fucking <laughs> second. Yeah, totally. So wait, when was the Sanderson sister? When did they get hung, hanged? 1690s around there okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna wager that this is roughly about the same time it's <laughs> probably happened down the fucking road are you kidding me <laughs> it, uh-oh it's the mdu woods yeah that's what's happening it's the mdu cursed woods where just a whole bunch of like fucking sp- <laughs> old-timey colonial time like spooky shit happens all the time it's the, the haunted fort but you know what the flying monkeys are there too yeah it, you know yeah the vich is happening like you know around the corner you know, Ernest, Ernest's relative is like, no, I don't want to live deliciously. Get away from me, Black Phillip. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's fucking going against a headless horseman somewhere. And... <laughs> that's the one you go to. Yeah, that's the one I go to. I desperately want to watch that, by the way. You haven't seen it either? <laughs> Nobody's seen it. Neither have I. I didn't know it existed until like last year. That's, 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 to be fair, you're right. I, I have yet to see it. Maybe it is the superior film, but that Johnny Depp one's pretty damn good. Of course it's... Look, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, no contest. I mean, th- this is fun to watch just because it's Jeff Goldblum as a baby playing Ichabod Crane. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pre-fly, even. Teaching the headless horseman about chaos theory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, I'm a school teacher, and listen, uh, 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 if, if, you, if you put a drop of water on a pumpkin and it goes down this way, you see, it'll go down the other side. That, that's that's chaos. Uh, you're, you're walking away, and here I am uh, talking to myself, uh, by myself. <laughs> The movie ends with the horseman just laying on the ground being like, I really hate that man. <laughs> um, I'll defend the Burton movie just because uh, the horseman decides to kill someone by using a scorpion move. So it's the fucking best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> defend it? You don't have to defend it. The movie's fucking fantastic. No, I, I know people who just don't like it because because Tim Burton. Uh, well, those people can go fuck themselves. Uh, we, we, we've talked about his ass before on the show. We have our, uh, it, it's much like uh, the full moon in Ernest movies. There's a cutoff, but we're not quite at it with Sleepy Hollow. Uh, we're just about there. Uh, I mean, I think, uh, the, the, the butcher, whatever the fuck, that was, that was good. What was that called? The butcher. S- Sweeney Todd. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, I haven't seen it since it came out, but I remember liking it. It's like trying to capture that. It's like Burton was trying to capture himself again in that film. Sure, in a Broadway musical. So when, when Jeff Goldblum as Ichabod, he gets that pumpkin thrown at him at the end there, I'm assuming. Mm. Uh, you know, he wakes up back at that house on the beach. He's back at the big chill. He's trying to get laid. Oh, there you go. No, he no he wakes up and he realizes that he, he has to go home. Because him, him and uh, Damon Wayans had shaved their bodies because oh. they're aliens. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Earth girls are easy, man. You took that in a different... I mean, it could be the same guy. He could wake up at the Big Chill, leave, then he's an alien. Big Chill, by the way, is a movie that I don't recommend to anybody under the age of 50. Uh, it's very boring. It's- <laughs> I was going to say, he gets hit with that pumpkin. Uh, he blacks out. And he wakes up to Ellie Sattler pulling debris off of him. And he's like, uh... <laughs> and she's like, Ian! <laughs> Remember to thank Brahms for a, re- for a fantastic weekend. He gets hit, he wakes up, and then, uh, you know, that wagon's going down the uh, road. And uh, everyone looks up at you, and, you know, those credits start rolling Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're finally awake. So yeah, so so uh, so Trantor gets buried, and and uh, and Phineas Whirl is there, and and condemns him to 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 be in this hole in this prison or what have you. And um, Trantor curses him and his family, and says, you know, one day uh, a Whirl just like you is gonna wake me up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking get these kids, and my army's gonna be released. I love I love the fact that like this this you know Phineas Reverend is like you know condemned into this prison and Trantor is like no you (laughs) fuck you (laughs) but also like every ancestor will be dumber than the last by the way just as an additional bonus to this (laughs) uh this 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 uh burial also by the way Mr. Whirl Mr. Phineas uh whatever Whirl Phineas E. Whirl did you have to put so (laughs) mate Phineas well. uh, T T Whirl, right? Wasn't that Prune? Was uh, Phineas T Prune? Yeah, yeah. So there you go. He he really made this whole uh, 
way for the troll to escape a lot easier than he needed it to? Uh, they're always adding these caveats, right? Ah, my ancestor would never be that stupid. Why would you tell anybody how to do it? Right. Colonial and medieval curses always come with, like, well, the curse can be broken or, you know, or in initiated with this seemingly, you know, casual, indifferent action. <laughs> <laughs> well... Remember Rumpelstiltskin? I mean, they literally talk about it the whole movie. Hey, maybe if we just say his name three times, ah, that'll never work. End of the movie, they say it three times, he disappears. Yeah, but the way that he's released in that film is like, well, a, a, a single mom has to cr make a wish and cry on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Rumpelstiltskin appears and fucks you and then, you know, goes in the shit. It goes to take a shower to wash <laughs> off. In his full regalia, not naked or anything. I would have loved to see that naked rump. That would have been a visual. I'm sorry, you misphrased that. He fucketh you, okay? Oh, he fucketh you for sure. Hard. It's his kind of world. He gets deep in there. So we pull out and, uh, you know, we get our we get our classic Hocus Pocus uh, um, spiel. Uh, doesn't this, this predates Hocus Pocus? I think it does. Yes. Two years? Yeah, uh, by like... I, by like a few years, like three or four years, I think, because this is 1990. This is 1991, and Hocus Pocus is 93, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe it's 93. Boom! And nobody talked about it till like 2005. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I know people that haven't seen that movie until this year, which is fucking insane to me. Well, that's crazy to me. It was a box office uh, failure, I believe. It was. I remember when that came out. I was so excited about it. We were all about it. We watched it at home. It must have been when it came out on rental at that point, but we loved it. I couldn't believe people didn't see this. Yeah, we watched it every year. It's a, It was a staple. It was that, and well, it was Ernest and Hocus Pocus. Right. I think this deserves to be talked about just as much as Hocus Pocus does, but I do think Hocus Pocus has overall um, better jokes. I think it's that's to each their own. Like, um, it, it is. It is very what your what, whatever your flavor is. Yeah, exactly. A lot more people know about it than Ern is scared stupid. I would I would wage. And Hocus Pocus definitely uh, it it angles more towards adults. Um, at some points in that movie, they have jokes that are just flat out fucking filthy. Sure. <laughs> oh well, sure, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's so strange because like we almost like went chrono uh, chronologically with that, right? Like, because they do it in the midnight hour, too. It's the same kind of thing where they have, like, somebody in the classroom giving a fucking report right. about the town and the evil that's in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Little Elizabeth giving her uh, book report, I suppose. On the, on the troll. And, uh... We're pretty much introduced to the rest of our key characters here. I mean, I guess we, we kind of got introduced to Ernest by that intro in the opening credits. Oh, by the way, yeah, he's playing his own ancestor, and he's fucking fantastic. Yes. Getting to use those acting chops we were talking about that he wasn't able to use too often. But we, we've crashed to this classroom, this girl giving her book report and saying, Yeah, yeah, it is, it's all real. The trolls are real. The curse is real. It's all real. The kid from Troll 2 is in the back like, she. It is. It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled backwards. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Eat a bologna sandwich, you fuck. No one believes you about your ghost grandpa, right? <laughs> grandpa Seth comes to <laughs> save him from the troll. He's like, I, I don't know what to do. These, are, these aren't goblins. These are trolls. <laughs> I'm useless. When I snap my fingers, you'll be able to piss on the troll. Ready? Go. And the troll just kills him. <laughs> he turns him into a fucking wooden doll. He sure does. Um, yeah, so we're introduced to Elizabeth and Kenny um, and the fucking mayor's kids, the Murdochs. Oh, Doyle rules. Oh, my fucking God. First of all, one of them, I couldn't tell what he looked like more. Eugene from The Walking Dead or like like a small, like, <laughs> he looks like a fucking mobster's, like, you know, goon. He's always in these weird baggy pants, these polo shirts, and his hair is in this bizarre little mullet. God, he's funny looking. <laughs> What is with this uh, gimmick, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it here, lifted right out of an unlucky leprechaun with the uh, the mayor with the two shitty kids. It's always two shitty ones. There's never one. Is that an MDU thing? Am I, am I overthinking this? I think it's a very easy trope to fall on when you have, like, an evil politician to give him, like, these two, like, and this get like, one of them's kind of, you know, one of them's kind of chunky, um, to just give him these two little fucking, you know, these juvenile brats, um... Because then it's like an ex it's an extension of his like you know how rotten these people can be because even their kids are just as bad. Yeah. No, sure. Right. To be completely fair, I mean, one of them can even be just like another kid. It didn't even have to be his brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I also think when like when you're a shitty person, 
in a movie, you need like a shitty friend because it's like <laughs> who ca- who cares if like the fat kid comes and throws rocks at your your treehouse? It's like you if if there weren't two of them, they could have just tipped him over. It, it would have been fine. Or that too, because like it's also one of those things where like, well, if it's just one of them, like who's he feeding off of? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I think it's like it. You know, to a less grander example, it's like the O'Doyle family. Because once you're like, because mm-hmm. <laughs> in class, you're like, oh fuck it, O'Doyle. Then, like, you see him, like, with his family, you're like, oh, there's, like, seven of them. (laughs) Well, right. So that's what happened to that kid, yeah. Sandler was definitely ratcheting that joke up to 11 (laughs) with that whole scenario. (laughs) Watch out for the (laughs) Murdochs. So they make fun of Elizabeth, and uh, Kenny defends her, and and kind of planting that seed to the audience immediately that not only are they friends, but, oh, Kenny defends Elizabeth. He must have a crush on her. Whoa. This won't come back later. Kenny's Kenny's my favorite child actor, or at least child, like child character we've uh, met so far in this in this three seasons of this. Ken, Kenny's a good kid. We needed some good kids. Can you clarify that, Connor? I need a clarification on that. In in what context? Like you like the kid? You like the actor? You like both? You like one or the other? Uh, both. And then I don't want to immediately suffocate him with a pillow. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not. A, I'm, I have no fear that he's going to shoot his school up. Sure. Um, that's a big one. And he doesn't have any. Like, he seems to have no other kind of, like, psychosocial issues I have to be concerned with. He's just a good kid, which is a rarity for us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? That's a good way to put it. I think I agree. (laughs) When put into words, yeah. I kind of, actually, I kind of like all the kids in this movie because, like, even, um... Even one of the ones you you don't like at first, like show up at the end, you're like, oh my god, they're gonna have a let's kill this fucking clown moment. It, it sure is, and they're all smart too, and yeah. they're all pretty likable. Agreed, except Joey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Joey! <laughs> we'll get to his ass. He's only in it for like two seconds. He's sweet, but he's dumb. Like it, <laughs> he's definitely oh, yeah. like the pet that they keep in the group because he has nowhere else to go. And it's like he's a sweet kid. I like the I like Joey, but it's like. Maybe when you're when you're trying to climb out of this like foot deep <laughs> creek, like look up and see whose hand you're grabbing. And there's only room for one idiot in this movie, <laughs> and he's the star. Yeah. Also, also try a little harder, please. So, so here he is, boys and girls. Jim Varney himself. Uh, well, well, the teacher goes, "Oh, whatever happened with the curse? What was the curse? Oh, his ancestors will get dumber and dumber and dumber." Crash got to earn with his fucking face on, and he's he's like devised this uh, cleaning mechanism via his garbage truck. So he's a garbage man in this film. He's the he's the czar of jars. <laughs> He's like a janitor, too, because he's, like, washing these garbage cans with, like, these mops, this concoction he's got going on, and he's flipping all these switches and shit. In in what way is the garbage man or garbage person in charge of cleaning your fucking barrels? I don't know. I love how they they make him, like, a semi-smart inventor guy, too, even though he's dumb as rocks. I was going to say, everyone's like... Everyone's like, Ernest, damn it, you're so stupid. And they just ignore the fact that he just came up with this fucking Rube Goldberg ass cleaning device out of nothing. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe he's not scared stupid TM yet, so. Well, he's supposed to be a redneck. That's the whole thing. Well, yeah, that's the shtick. And it's like, oh, he's he's a redneck, so he's just like putting shit together to see what works. And that's why he ends up with this stuff that's falling apart constantly. But it kind of works at the same time. But, well, it, it always goes on the fritz, right? Right, right. So that's exactly what happens. And he falls into the back of the garbage truck. <laughs> he tells his dog, he goes, hey, Rimshot, Rimshot! He's like, open it! And Rimshot puts his fucking paw, it's this cute little dog, uh, on like this one lever and the fucking lid shuts and then we got a fucking New Hope situation brewing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love his, I love Rimshot. Um, he's this adorable little uh, um, uh, Jack Russell Terrier. Um, I love at some point he's like, Rimshot, give me some help. And like, he fucking goes over and like honks the horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they have like a novelty clown yeah. horn on the <laughs> side too. He's honking that. <laughs> now, Rimshot, pull the lever. Rimshot. Chucky's there. He pulls the other switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's grabbing like pipes and shit to try to like, you know, stop the walls from closing in. And then he picks up like a baby doll. This is one of my favorite bits, dude. <laughs> He's doing all... He, it's a life or death situation. You don't have any time to fuck around, Ernest. He does a whole comedy routine. 
<laughs> hey, hey, uh, you know I gotta do this. I got, I got a family. You can't do this to me. Uh, let me think about it. I'm sorry, pal. I gotta do it. Sticks the head in the fucking gear. <laughs> the, be- <laughs> the best part is the doll swearing revenge. Yeah. I, know. I, know I know where you where live. You, live. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's baby oopsie daisies? Uh. uh cousin oh no i think that's actually baby oopsie daisy and that's the end of her existence ernest versus the demonic toys ernest ernest already took out demonic toys he's fucking ready for those deadites <laughs> <laughs> so he gets the idea to take the battery out of the um out of the remote control it's uh <laughs> controlling the truck and he's like <laughs> and then I, because is this because he's a superconductor from Ernest Goes to Jail? Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the joke. That's that's the uh, connecting tissue there that he got. Ele- he got the electric chair at the end of that movie, and he got all these powers where he could fire electricity off his fingers and fly and walk up the wall and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, dude, <laughs> it's so Are good. You- fucking kidding me dude it's it's my personal favorite Ernest film we we might be coming back to it down maybe next year maybe the year after we have to i think that's the i think that's the other one that we need to do because it's the other rim shot one also so for we got to sure, keep rim sure, shot yeah. in the yeah. uh, lore uh, but yeah, that's absolutely what the reference is. It's connecting the electricity to the battery to the control, and he gets squashed. That's hilarious. <laughs> so Kenny and Elizabeth run up on the truck, and they and they hear him inside the truck, and they open it up, and he's fucking compacted into like this garbage block, and like it's one of the okay, the physical comedy is this physical comedy is like something like you we just don't have anymore we don't even have uh comedians that are like doing shit like this now that i'm aware of sure well you don't ha- you don't have comedians who's like who's ca- like so ace ventura is like someone else i can think of yeah um, um who's a character who's like one seemingly impervious to any and all mortal peril sure um who can you know take some kind of like you know who who can in this case be compacted into a garbage truck which by the way up until Turtles 2, murdered the Shredder, okay? <laughs> and that was a kid's movie. <laughs> Do you think the Shredder came out like this with, like, his feet, like, next to his head going, <laughs> <laughs> and Tatsu fucking dug him out? Who knows? <laughs> well, no, Tatsu was surprised. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's like, oh, you're, you're alive. M- Master Sh- Sh- Shredder. <laughs> you, you, sanitation worker, free me from this peril. <laughs> <laughs> the Warrel Kid saved me. I challenge. So he falls out of the fucking thing and he's all scrunched up. It's a good gag. Right on his face, by the way. I don't know how he doesn't have a broken <laughs> nose or some broken bones. That had to fucking hurt. Dude, that is <laughs> the peril he goes through in this film. That's like hundreds of pounds of garbage. And, yeah, and like, I think more to that point, like nowadays, first of all, uh, theatrical comedy is dead. Yeah. It's gone. Slapstick doesn't even exist anymore. Slapstick doesn't exist, and I think that's been partially ruined by... Uh, excuse me, didn't you, uh, we, we just talked about this last week. Obviously, uh, Hubie's Halloween's Slapstick Comedy of the Year. Of the century, even, maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that doesn't exist. Um, slapstick comedy, I think the deluge of, um, bad parody movies like Vampire Suck, Scary Movie, Disaster Movie, Adventure, all those fucking movies, I think those movies contributed to, like, the death of the parody film and the death of like slapstick and goofy comedy because those things are so fucking bad. Uh, they're so on the nose too, you know. Yeah, like their their, their idea of comedies were like, remember the thing? Here's the thing, poopy. <laughs> it, right, that's- exactly. But then you have something like Spaceballs, where it was, or like Robin Hood. You know, that's what Mel Brooks did. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Leslie Nielsen even like towards the end there was starting to do some stinkers, but like even some of the ones I think that people don't like are still like really good slapstick, like Wrongfully Accused. That's a great one, dude. <laughs> I think it is, but when you look at IMDb, I guess people don't agree, but I think that's... He he is one of those guys that you're talking about, Connor. Well, it's because Leslie Nielsen, his comedic timing is, like, godlike. Yeah. Um, And even in Scary Movie 3, he is the shining beacon of, of laughing sure. in that movie because, like, every time he shows up, he's a fucking riot. Um, I think especially when, like, him and Ja Rule think that they're surrounded by aliens and he they just start beating the fuck out of old people. <laughs> I was going to say another name that comes to mind. I mean, he's also a little older now, and his star has obviously fallen quite a bit since, uh, well, when I say the name, you know what I'm talking about, Michael Richards. Um, obviously, at one point, definitely I could see being in that in that uh, conversation. That star fell while he was doing Seinfeld. Like, <laughs> No, nah, that was that was post-Seinfeld, and Curb, Curb actually even 
kind of poked a little fun, you know, at that whole situation. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that situation specifically, but I just feel like him as a comedian and an actor, I think he was already over... No, I, he was phenomenal on Seinfeld. He was great on Seinfeld, but then, like, name something that he was in after that. Oh, after? I don't know. That's true. I, I, I mean... Well, he was in a comedy show where he dropped a certain word a bunch of times. Well, no, sure, but I'm talking about, like, literally, like, making a comedy or being in a role. Right, I, I guess when you're comparing to Jim Varney and... and, and uh, Jim Carrey, I get what you're saying. Well, I'm just thinking of another really animated actor. Uh, that I mean, comes to okay, mind. here's the thing. Uh, Robin Williams is dead too. So, like, in a number of years, like, so many things have contributed to like what I feel like is the the long term death of like the big budget theatrical comedy. And like, I would actually call this movie like. I wouldn't call it big budget, but by the end of it, you're like, wow, they fucking went all in on this stuff. Uh, it's a, it's got a pretty big budget, I think. I mean, I didn't look it up, but like, goddamn, it, yeah, it's... yeah. Um, but like, or like, even a movie like I don't think a movie like Galaxy Quest you'd get away with nowadays because it's expensive and it's a comedy. And yeah. if anyone would probably get behind it, they'd be like, yeah, it can go to Netflix and get actors with a third of the potential. That's where everything um, goes to die now, apparently. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think if honestly, if Jim Varney were around today and an earnest reboot happened, I think it probably would be with half the spirit, and it would get dumped on Netflix, and it would get abandoned with no faith in it. Um, and if it was a series, it'd be canceled after one season. Mm-hmm. You know what was good, though? Pee-wee was good, the new Pee-wee. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to throw out two more names just because I think they would also maybe not good not, not good earnest uh, uh, actors per se, but two other people that have energy that come to mind that are a little younger. Uh, well, young, maybe subjective. Uh, a- Andy, uh, damn, his name just left my mind. The guy from uh, The Lonely Island, uh, Andy Sandberg. Um, and, uh, Eric Andre. I could see er- Eric Andre's pretty, uh, energetic. Eric Andre's fantastic. <laughs> is that, is that Hot Rod, that guy? That first guy? Yes, that, that's Andy Sandberg, yeah. Yeah, um, and, uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is, like, currently some of my favorite, his, some of my favorite work from him. And, uh, it's, as well as, um... Oh shit! Whoever plays uh, Captain Holt on that show, who's like a surprise, like comedic treasure, he's in the mist. I can't remember his fucking name. Yeah, it's uh, his 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 rude neighbor whose tree uh, uh falls over. Um. So yeah. So Elizabeth and Kenny show up, and uh, you know, he's in the fucking cube, and then uh, we're introduced to the sheriff and the mayor, and basically the mayor's just like, oh, I'm I'm a fucking real dickhead. Where's that Warrell guy? He, he was supposed to clean up the fucking Hackmore place, and he just never went down there. You know, it's a fucking scum hole down there. What do I pay him for? If he doesn't go clean it up, I'm gonna fire his ass. I mean, you should be paying him more because once we see this place, you're like, that's not a guard. That's not. That's a fucking junkyard. Like, <laughs> let me ask. Let me ask you another question. What the fuck business is it of yours? <laughs> it's her land. <laughs> It's almost time. The secret code is Botswaney and Lumberjack. Send us a direct message on your favorite social media app for a chance to win this week's Trigger Trash giveaway. Again, the secret code is Botswaney and Lumberjack. And remember, kids, the clock is ticking. Don't miss it. You know this uh, this mayor reminds me of that that Canadian uh, government official Rob Ford. Oh my god! <laughs> what was he doing? Like meth or coke or something? A couple years ago, he got famous He's for. He's dead, isn't he? Oh, you, he did die. You're yeah, right. Oh my okay, god. Okay, so Rob Ford was a Canadian mayor, governor, something along those lines. Apparently, his brother is still in politics. Isn't also a POS? Yeah, he was an elected official who's like not just like a piece of shit elected official. Like he was the, the Chris Farley. Of piece of shit elected officials and was like on the news frequently just like in the middle of a cocaine bender or like a meth bender or like being drunk as fuck in public. Um, and then I think died partying. Um, like piece of shit man, but hell of a story. And yeah, this mayor like without the the immediate edge of like, you know, heavy drug substance abuse like does ring a bell for fucking for Rob he kind of <laughs> looks like him anyway that that that's what jumped in my mind but yeah he's like yeah and he like Joe was just saying he's like yeah yeah Ernest is leaving the Hackmore family now their house now oh no he's like he's going away from the Hackmore place fucking moron go get him so isn't he stupid what is he stupid or something so sheriff dad Kenny's dad he's got to go chase down the fucking garbage truck and there's this cliff 
this great scene where uh, Ernest is in the truck with Kenny and Elizabeth, and he's like, they're like, yeah, we're not supposed to be in here. And he's like, ah, it's okay. It's just against the state <laughs> law. It's not that big a deal. And, you know, I make my own rules. I do whatever I want. And, he, you know, don't worry about it, cop pulls him over. Ooh. Above the law. He runs out of that car like, uh, what did I do, officer? Did I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Was I speeding? He says. <laughs> And he's like, and he's like, you got to go down to the Hackmore place and clean it up or you're fucking fired. And he's like, oh, I just took a cold pill. I'm not supposed to <laughs> operate heavy machinery. Um, I love that even when uh, Ernest is like objectively wrong, you're like, God, I feel so bad for you because you're so likable. Like, oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's so strange. I-, I feel like he's one of the only people to have like this childlike air about him where... I, I don't know, like, you feel bad for him. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the urge to patronize him mm-hmm. or, like, attempt to give him some, like, like here's a slap of reality, Jack. Like, no, like, you never, it's, you're like, dude, you're, you're the way you are, and we just have to kind of accept you for the, for what you are. Even the sheriff is, like, he's, like, he's, like, God, oh, you know, Ernest, come on, man. He's, like, you gotta go do that shit. Dude, he's a dick to Ernest the whole movie. Well, he's getting slack, for, he's getting flack from the fucking mayor and everybody else in town. <laughs> like, he is... You know, this this big goof who's got, like, you know, who has the attitude and personality of, like, a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old. But, like, everyone still talks to him like he's an adult. Sure. But I also think part of that is the mayor just doesn't want to be bothered to, like, tell Ernest like it is, at least yet. So he's, like, going to the sheriff, like, yeah, you do my dirty work for me. I don't want to really, like, get into it with the guy. That's what officials do, right? They, they make the cops do it? Yeah, go do that. Right, exactly. Well, also, I think the mayor's a piece of shit and rather go start shit between two people who probably have a good rapport. So. Um, yes. So he so he fucks out over to that, uh, the Hackmore place. He brings Rimshot with him, of course, because he goes everywhere with this dog, and I'm kind of okay with it because this dog, again, is just uh, cute and wonderful and, and brings so much joy to this movie. And and has, like, an uh, like an impressive amount of screen presence for a dog? He's well-trained. Oh, yeah. yeah. This dog is fantastic. He really is, and it's kind of strange the way he ends up being, in a, a really weird way, Ernest's, like, straight man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. A lot of good comedic scenes with him. There's a one scene later on that is really nailed home. I th- I would be willing to bet I know exactly which scene it is. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 almost there. It's it is like a single piece of physical comedy <laughs> that had me fucking rolling. So, um, he's at the Hagmore place and like it is littered with. Fu- First of all. Whoever calls this garbage, I want to punch them in the face. They're expressions of the soul, man. They got no garbage here. <laughs> this is yeah. There's no garbage. I love that line. There's no garbage here. Um, uh, all these like uh, junk sculptures uh, and everything, and her doors are covered with flamethrowers. Yeah, <laughs> apparently she's got torches and shit. And... She has torches and pl- blow torches and. I mean, she's over a hundred years old. She's got to protect herself. <laughs> She can't fuck around. And we see it later on, but, like, the inside of her house is, like, this fucking steel fortress with, like, books everywhere. It's awesome looking. Sign me up, dude. This is, like, she's fucking, this is, like, Crookshank across the street. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like Crookshank, though, man. That's why she's got those flamethrowers. <laughs> Just keep him out. And he's wandering around, and she runs out, and she's like, Bougie, Bougie, Bougie. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking vines go up, and Ernest comes up. And then, like, 30 seconds, I said, Susan, okay, so she runs out, like, and in my head, I went, boo-dee, boo-dee, and like, <laughs> 15 seconds later, she's like, the sun, the moon, the earth, the stars, I'm like, oh my god, she's fucking okra. Like, <laughs> okra. <laughs> Got no crystals here. I like her better as okra than, than <laughs> okra. <laughs> <laughs> she's Kel Mitchell in a wig. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Eartha Kitt, by the way. Oh my god. Um, who is also, again, like, committing to this harder than anyone probably ever asked her to. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, as soon as she opens her mouth, I'm like, oh, my God, you're Yzma, and I never put that together until today. <laughs> um, I I remember her being in this a lot more than she actually is, but the every scene she is in, uh, she makes work really well. She, she basically... She's trying to steal a scene from Jim Varney, and it doesn't always work, but she tries her damnest. Uh, in this one, she really does, because she goes in this, like insane rant about like he's gonna deliver doom on this town and like the the, the remnants will be dragged away on pitchforks and she's screaming it into his face (laughs) because he says to her he's like he's like recycling is a very important part of good citizenship and that's what sets her off (laughs) yeah 
She's like, yeah, and you'll be a dead citizen. When the poisons of the evil <laughs> courses through the portals and channels of your body, you will lie a quivering toxic mass of screaming flesh. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and you're going to be loaded onto a cart with pitchforks. <laughs> She also goes, aren't you uh, that whirl kid? And I'm like, yeah, who else walks around in this outfit? <laughs> <laughs> the same every day. A jean vest. And then she, and then she walked in and went, pull the lever. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong lever. Um, just real quick, like, none, I don't know if they're trying to steal the scene from each other, but they, my goodness, their chemistry is just so fucking on point. It's perfect. Shh. Sure. When, when, when I say that, I mean more so that she's got to work for every bit of scenery because Jim's eating a lot of it. Well, both of them, there's nothing left. They're fighting for scraps. <laughs> sure. So, like, Jim Farney's Jim Farney, and, like, his, you know, the Ernest character thing speaks for itself. But Eartha Kitt's also, like, the last Catwoman in a Batman show that is nothing but hammy energy from start to finish. In every single fucking episode. She's perfect. Right. If one of your peers is Cesar Romero, you there's no underdoing it. There's no half measure. Like <laughs> no. you have to walk in and just be like, I am the lightning bolt today. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. So then we go to the woods. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, scared me out of my uh, skin a little bit. I got the Willies there for a second. Uh, Willies TM. <laughs> Because uh, Elizabeth is doing her Scream Queen impression here. <laughs> Where's my eyeballs? Where's my eyes? <laughs> uh, for a second. So I had looked away for a second, and I thought that because this transition happens immediately after uh, uh, Miss Hagmore screams at uh, Ernest, yeah. I thought Ernest responded by screaming like a small girl. Um, <laughs> and then I, t- I turned around, and it's Elizabeth. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> my heart was in my throat. <laughs> they have, like, some haunt set up in the woods. And, uh, I, you know, I know Pissy likes uh, haunts because I, I listened to the episode where you guys talked about I haunted houses haunts. and building your own haunted house. So wh- how would you grade this haunted house? Because I think it's even for kids pretty fucking poor. It's, <laughs> it's a bit sad. I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, well, hang on, hang on. Well, these kids like nine years old across the board. Yeah, sure. And, like, they managed to just like they just appropriated some structure and filled it with some stuff. I don't know. Seven out of ten. <laughs> Seven out of ten. They peeled all those grapes. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm also gritting on a scale for a bunch of like you know a gaggle of children. So like you know. Okay, five on that scale. I'll say. Yeah, I'll give it a five. And I won't go any higher. But I, yeah, I'm I'm with Sean on this one. I'm not going higher than five because <laughs> listen. If you have all, if you had all that fucking time to peel grapes, you had time to make some <laughs> spider webs. You yeah. had. You exactly. had time to do a lot of shit that you just spent peeling grapes. <laughs> she spent a lot of time practicing that scream, you know, just wearing her throat out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, we never see the peeled grapes. Maybe they actually didn't do that yet. I mean, if, if they didn't, it, we'll never know because here come the O'Doyles to fucking knock uh, the building over in, in seconds flat. I, I think the bigger problem is it's just one big room. There's like no other rooms. It's like a big tent. A big box, cardboard box. Welcome to the Haunted Shack. <laughs> the Haunted <laughs> Amazon package. Yeah. <laughs> um, God, I, uh, I love these two little morons because, like I said, one of them is dressed so hilariously. Like, when he walks in and starts rocking this thing, he's like, Eh, wise guy. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Not the grapes. Watch out for the grapes. We we peeled them. Like, he might as well he might as well have a small, like, like a Fisher-Price baseball bat that he hits people in the knees with. He reminds me of Murph from Problem Child 2, uh, but, like, a little version of him. Anyway, he knocked the fucking the Murdoch's like just knocked this fucking haunted house over and it collapses with like a a a, 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 a soft breeze. This thing falls down. <laughs> yeah, it makes the same sound as like cardboard falling over. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to the uh, the auto body shop. I guess I, I, was this the second job Ernest has? I think he's. Just, I think Ernest is just tuning up his his old truck. Changing a tire, maybe? I Apparently, he's got it up on a jack. Because Kenny's like, yeah, they destroyed the playhouse. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to get back at those guys. What do I do? And Ernest is like, well, you need the high ground. And then we go into one of the best fucking segments of this whole film. Obi-Wan Kenobi comes in and sits the kids down. <laughs> and he tells me at that time that he cut his best friend's legs off and left him to die in a puddle of lava. And the kids were horrified and they went home. He was a good friend. <laughs> How could you die? 
what? He said high ground. I, like, Come on. <laughs> He's like, you need the high ground. He just wipes a lightsaber. Like, <laughs> Anakin, I have the high ground. Don't do it, Anakin. I have the high ground. <laughs> you think anytime anybody... Anytime anybody's ever said that around him, you know, fucking Vader just choked him out right then and there. It was like a trigger word for him. Oh yeah, the new guy, the new guy comes in, the new Grand Moff comes in. Yeah, we should we should get the high ground, and then Vader just fucking <laughs> strangles him immediately, Vader just <laughs> chokes him to t- like with his bare hands though, <laughs> not even with a force choke. <laughs> oh god, he's a robot. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Ernest is like, you know what you need? You need some hysterical perspective. <laughs> and then he starts going on about the Ottomans. Oh dude, it's so great. He's like, he talks. Talks about Botswana and like them getting invaded by the Ottomans, and the reason that the Botswana won was because they had the high ground. But mind you, while he's doing this, he's he's going into multiple characters. By the way, well, yeah, uh, this is one of those montages of characters that he transforms into, which is all fantastic because, like, so again, this is my first viewing with this. Like, what I'm expecting is Ernest. What I'm not expecting is him to do suddenly artillery barrage me with. 10 characters um, in a single sequence who all get like one to two lines a piece and all of them land. Every single one. Every of single one of them. And he commits to every one. Like my favorite is the scary Ottoman in the silver yeah. fucking armor with his dangly Fu Manchu mustache. My favorite one is the Botswanian lumberjack easy. I love him. Yes. <laughs> there ain't no trees in Botswana. Uh-uh. I'm a Botswanian lumberjack and I ain't never had a job. <laughs> I, I don't remember any line but this one with the woman that's filing her nails and she goes, does anybody smell fish? Do you smell fish? And it's my favorite <laughs> yeah, line right. of the whole thing because it's it's totally removed, like has nothing to do with anything else. He's just like direct hit and the mayor's car gets fucked up by the the uh, Jack that, gets, that goes flying, which by the way has one of the worst effects in the movie. Because the window <laughs> breaks before the Jack yeah. gets hit. <laughs> Like clearly, it's like a solid second and a half before the jack hits it; it explodes. <laughs> also, this, I don't know if this is the scene you were talking about, pissy. But while he's doing this montage, the entire time this uh, crank is bending comically, and Rimshot keeps like trying to get Ernest's attention on the on the uh, jack, and he's just ignoring him the entire time. <laughs> oh no, th- that is not the scene I was thinking of. I okay. was thinking of the scene, and not to get too far ahead of us, it's the the the. Boy Scout scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't wait to get to that part. That part's great. That is when it's like peak. He is the peak straight man to Jim Varney. <laughs> oh, and he's because he's just staring at him like, what is this motherfucker <laughs> saying to me right now? Is that when he has a stick in his mouth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't, I don't want to give away the rest of that scene because I really want to talk about what fucking Ernest is doing. Yeah. <laughs> So essentially, the outcome of that of that whole sequence is Kenny's like, "Oh, we need it. We need a treehouse," and and Ernest is like, "I thought we needed dress shields." <laughs> um, so he takes the kids into the the forest to look for a tree, and when I was a kid, the one of these makes me laugh really hard, but like. The the first tree they come upon, he fucking knocks on it, and it's like, dong, dong, dong. And he's like, nah, too much bass. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of this is when he's walking around, he's, tre- he's, he's like, he's like, not old survival trick is uh, the bark always grows on the outside of the tree. I'm like, ah, you mean well, Ernest, but you're such a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> he hits one of these trees, he's like, this one's nice, and it just fucking falls over. <laughs> and he, here's a good one, and then he gets shit in the eye by a bird. <laughs> It's like, oh, inhabited. Also, then, like, yeah, the, you know, of course the tree they pick is, like, it, like the Bernstein bears are lost in there somewhere, okay? <laughs> like, it is the fucking most evil-looking tree. It looks like Shao Kahn would wear it on his head. <laughs> well, they go through this spooky little pathway, and he's like, ooh, this is neat. And I'm like, Ernest, you're scared of that. Come on. <laughs> So they go in there and they, they find this tree and he's like, this is it, tree of the stars. This is a tree to die for. Don't they immediately pan down in the fucking trolls? But, oh, no. <laughs> they, they're, they, well, they like, they're like, this is great. Let's build the tree house here. So Ernest, I guess, like backs his fucking truck up and like dumps a whole bunch of junk on the ground. And he's like, here you go, kids. I've been collecting this stuff for years. Go for it. And they build this tree house out of this junk. And... Ernest is like... And a bunch of weapons, apparently. Well, yeah. He, doesn't he say some shit on the way there? He's like, he's like we're going to build it with photon lasers and all this shit. Yeah, when they're walking there, he's talking about all the weapons he's going to make to defend it. But, uh, but yeah, to your point, Connor, he, like, 
he's like, a treehouse starts with a single nail. And he, like, hammers this fucking piece of wood in. And then Trantar's, Trantar, like, wakes up. <laughs> He's like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Yeah. Somebody's banging on my front door. I love the kids immediately just, like, settle into building, like, the Lost Boys weapons from Hook. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just this mini artillery from, like, of kids' weapons. Oh, my God. That's so accurate. Did you ever notice that? The first hit he takes at that nail, the first one, he's like, begins with a single nail. And then he swings and totally misses the nail. Oh, for sure. <laughs> when he, he licks the hammer before he hits it, and it's like Velcro peeling. Like yeah. The sound of Velcro. <laughs> well, I think, like, also, like, you can, like, that might be noticeable, but the rest of him is so on point. You're like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and when he starts, like, whacking the uh, the tree with this hammer, uh, you know, Trantor starts moving around, and there's like a wind that goes down the uh, the valley. Yeah, and Lady Hackmore's like puts her. She has like glasses on that have like the uh, lenses that flip up, so she flips them up, and she like has like a look in the distance. Oh yeah, the evil is aroused, man. Yeah, those deadites. We were talking about them earlier. <laughs> They do such a good job with that. We haven't commented on Eartha Kitt's uh, uh, character's appearance yet. I think we should. Oh, sure. Yeah. Break it down for us. Because it's startling and fantastic. So she's like constantly in just like rags. I can't. It's just like it's like a burlap sack, like turned into a jacket. Welder's goggles um, and her hair is like a weeping willow. It's just these big fucking just silver things going everywhere and colossal caterpillar eyebrows yeah she looks like a brian frout drawing yeah she is fantastic looking like this kid it's a fully realized character i love it so they build this fucking tree house and she comes running out and she's like what are you doing he's like of all the trees you had to pick this one he's like no <laughs> i didn't know it was on your land we would have asked if it was okay she's like you're an idiot he's like we're cursed it's it, flee this place and she runs away and he's like wait uh can we talk air rides we're not like on your place we're above it I, I do love the observation of like this is literally a like a forest full of trees and you picked <laughs> the literal most evil looking tree and the actual most evil tree in this entire town well there's your high ground man yeah <laughs> well then he chases her down and it's just like apologizing nonstop and she's like no you don't get it you know you, you basically bring in death upon the entire world but I mean, again, the movie doesn't continue if he does not get this information, but she, well, sure. for some reason, explains to him exactly how to release this thing. So Ernest runs after Old Lady Hackmore, and the fucking, somehow the Murdochs, like, I guess, followed them there and, like, waited for them to build the street <laughs> all day. <laughs> yeah. To attack it. So they come in, they're like, oh, trash in this place is going to be great. And they start throwing rocks and shit at it. And then the kids, uh, you know, Joey, uh, Liz, and, um, and Kenny, like, man their battle stations. And we got, like, cat food guns and pizza throwing mechanisms to, like, fucking hit these kids with food items. Well, they, you know, they open the trunk. Munchie comes out. He sings that song. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. And he hands you a pizza. <laughs> The first rotten pizza that hit me, and I'd be like, "We're done." Okay, like, yeah, <laughs> dude. If you if you shoot me with a can of cat food, fuck you. Goodbye. I'm not a prawn. I'm not gonna eat it. <laughs> hey, man, those pizzas—they're from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You better watch yourself. I, the, the thing with Munchie supplying those pizzas is he doesn't—you know—he doesn't make the pizzas magically. He has to fly them in himself. You know what I mean? So it takes like 20 minutes for them to get there. That's why they look like shit by the time they get there. <laughs> So they hit him with this fucking pizza, and it's just one of the best lines of the flick. But Kenny's like, ooh, pizza mess. And then they fucking Murdochs run off or whatever. But then, like, yeah, like Sean said, Ernest comes back later. Right. He, he shows up and basically has all the intel from Hackmore. And he's like, yeah, can you believe this? I have to say this very specific thing and knock on this tree branch three times. <laughs> well, she was going on about trolls and yada, yada. And uh, he's, he's like, he's like, yeah. So the only way this thing can come out is if a whirl like you, <laughs> right? The kids basically talking back. Yeah, that was yeah. great <laughs> on Halloween night or whatever. And he's like, and, um, puts his hand on a tree like this <laughs> and says, "Yeah, I call the fourth Trantor." And then he fucking knocks on it three times. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna make fun of it a little bit. 
because I, I can't be uh, honest on this show if I don't, because I, I made fun of it for Midnight Hour. But come on, Ernest. What are you doing? Dude, it's Ernest. Uh, I would like to add that the kid in Hocus Pocus does the same fucking thing, okay? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, don't light the Black Flame Candle. He's like, don't light the Black Flame Candle, and he fucking does it anyway. <laughs> Max is a legitimate asshole. Ernest is just yeah. dumb. Because he because right after he does all that, he's just like, well, what are their chances of that happening? <laughs> I mean, again, they don't know they li- they don't know they're in a movie. We know they are, so keep that in mind. I mean, if I if I light fucking some kind of candle or I say some kind of inscription, I mean, I I'm not ever gonna touch that fucking shit. But if I did, I would fully expect none of this to happen. I guess I'll give him that. Max was Max is trying to be a tough guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure, Ar- Ernest is just dumb. I get what you're saying. He's like, hey, Yabos, want to see this some shit? Look at this. <laughs> Where's he from? <laughs> I don't know. He's he, Hollywood, dude. Bobo, Bobo. But, oh, but, but yeah, somebody's in trouble. I think his name's Ernest P. World. Bobo, Bobo, Ernest is in trouble. <laughs> so as as soon as he you know says this incantation, you know, what could happen? The fucking clouds come in. It's all dark out. Thunder's going off. The fucking kids book it out of there. Carrie K- Tagawa's there. Yeah. And and suddenly Trantor has the ability to rip through fabric. <laughs> <laughs> well, like technically there's already a hole in it because he already ripped that hole in there. I could escape right now, but I'm waiting to be called. I was sleeping. And the whole time they left are the kids like run away scared. Ernest, he could have left. He could have gotten his car and got the fuck out of Dodge. But he sits there curled up in a ball with Rimshot in the treehouse. Like, oh, what am I going to do? I, I, I got to leave. Come on, Rimshot. <laughs> this fucking Trantor comes in to, like, r- kill Ernest. And Ernest is just like, oh, my God. I'm sh- I sure hope you're from Keebler. And he's, <laughs> and he's like, Doug, hey, man, I know I know Kung Fu, Chow Mein, Lo Mein. I saw Hulkamania three times. One time in slow-mo. <laughs> Once in slow-mo. So Trantor's like coming after him, and then we get this first glimpse of uh, of uh, you know the milk thing that'll come up a little bit later. But he like kicks over a pail, and there's like milk and bananas and shit in it. And Trantor runs away. Uh, so Trantor is hideous, um, and is a like a gigantic prosthetic puppet head, um, with like like eleven moving parts in this fucking face. Um, Way more than that, dude. <laughs> it, it is it is ridiculous. Like, the, first of all, this can't be fun to run around in. Um, secondly, like the amount of goop and slime and <laughs> muck and boogers that are just all over this thing is impressive. Um, it's got features on features on features. Like its ears have ears, and the ears yeah. of the, that you know have horns. Like it's awesome looking. Really excellent stuff. The two noses always freak me out as a kid. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It's <laughs> disgusting. Here's the thing. Okay, like there's I work with animals. I can do blood. I can do piss. I can do shit. It's fine. Whatever. The moment a human being or a human like thing either spits or sneezes near me, I am vomit city. I'm oh yeah. Done. <laughs> I think we talked about that before. I fucking can't do it. <laughs> Uh, Trantor is played by Jonas uh, Marscatolo, and he's voiced by Ernie uh, Faselius. <laughs> Every voice it sounds like this. And the only, the, the only thing, okay, so Jonas uh, Marscatolo like had done a couple other things, like only like two other things, like ever. But Ernie uh, Faselius, uh, who did the voice, did the voice of the Raincore Keeper. In Return of the Jedi? What? Yeah. Oh, that like really poorly dubbed over voice when he's crying over it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. The one that goes, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird piece of trivia. What, what what are you known for? Oh, Ernest and uh, Return of the Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> and the fat guy who screams nonsense in the basement of Jabba's palace <laughs> <laughs> against a green screen. He's crying over his dead pet, man. Come on. <laughs> Maybe his dead pet shouldn't have been beaten Twilight Dancers, okay? <laughs> well, yeah. Sure. Every All, all the Twilights in the club are getting tipsy, dude. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. God. So then the kids stop to catch their breath uh, at the outskirts of the forest, and they, they all go home because they're waiting. Way past dinner time. Way past, dude, it's got to be like 10 o'clock at night, and these kids are like 8. Oh, easily. And they're hanging out with this 
forty year old guy in the woods. I mean, hanging out with Ernest is like hanging out with a ten year old. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree, but you could tell the parents in this town are kind of like, you gotta stop hanging out with this fucking guy. But also, you're ten. Or, or 9 or 10, right? Oh, yeah. If I came home at 10 o'clock, I'd get my ass whooped. Oh, sure, sure. If it was, like, close to sunset and I came home at this point, like... Oh, it's before dark. You better be home. Yeah. Yeah, the streetlights were my curfew. Streetlights came on, you went home. Yes, exactly. Although my dad, in his one of his more famous attempts to ground me, he said, you can't go out until you learn to come home on time. I was like, if I can't go out, I can't learn to come home, Dad. And then he said... <laughs> <laughs> you shut you shut up when you're talking to me <laughs> so joey starts heading home and uh, he gets a little dennis nedry uh, syndrome <laughs> he trips down a fucking ditch he drops his fucking shaving cream can oh my god dude if this was like if this was if like this woods was next to like a major highway or, like, if there was a rake nearby, <laughs> either A, he'd have been hit by a car, or B, step in the rake and knocked himself out. Like, or, or if there was a pit with some troglodytes in the bottom of it, he would have fallen in there. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, he's fucking food. Like, <laughs> Jamie's there. He's got his fucking foot on his head like Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, get in the pit with him. He falls, like, a like one foot down and, like, just face first against, like, the bank of this thing. And is like, oh, my God. Ah, 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 and just, like, just helpless and then a hand reaches out to get him and he's like oh wow there's no way this is suspicious uh and yeah it's fucking the troll <laughs> well he does use Ernest's voice even though his hand definitely feels nothing like a human hand i have to imagine i was just about to say that pissy said that before and it's like you couldn't feel this giant three-fingered fucking <laughs> troll hand grab your arm this giant three-fingered i'm sure booger encrusted hand <laughs> I was just about to say, you know that hand is fucking gooey. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Why in the world would you, like, is Ernest that gross? <laughs> He's pretty clean cut the entire film. How do you maintain any sort of grip, like, if you're just that covered in mucus all the time? <laughs> I mean, this thing, I think, is pretty damn strong, so I think once it's got a hold of you, you're kind of fucked. I don't know. Why don't you ask me? Give me your hand, kiddo. <laughs> Go away, Kumdar. I didn't call you, Kumdar. <laughs> He wants to arm wrestle him. <laughs> Ew, boogers versus cum. <laughs> that is it. That's the new member of this um this dog playing cards painting that we've assembled here. <laughs> it's cum dart, it's, it's corpse fucker. It's uh, it's it's this troll. Well, now that Trantor is out of his sack, you know he can he can run around down there in this hole because all leads all roads lead to the pit anyway. He's gonna join the card game now. That's true. But yeah, so Joey gets turned into a a little wooden doll. Pretty much, pretty much without any effort. This is low-key terrifying. It is. Again, this is one of those, I mean, we're making fun of it. Well, not making fun of it, but we're making light of it because, like, this is actually pretty fucking creepy, though. Um, there's a lot of, like, pretty, I, I would say pretty intensely scary sequences, especially for an Ernest movie. So, I was, uh, especially later on, like, I was kind of, like, thinking in my head of, for different reasons, like, where the wild things are, which is a movie that is, one, I cried like a baby during. Um, but two, like, has these gigantic, you know, fully realized as creatures that are, uh, at times fucking petrifying for what's supposed to be a kid's movie. Um, and in this case, uh, you cover them in boogers and you make them talk like this. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and you, and you add, you kind of add to that effect. And then, like, he turns these kids into just fucking these crude looking wooden dolls. Yeah. It's it's creepy for sure. Yeah, uh, and there's something else that happens later on that if I'm sure I was a kid would probably have the same effect on me as um, as what's her nuts turning into a fucking goblin and pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have large march? Yeah. So, Trantor puts these wooden dolls into his little cubby hole in the tree. He's got a little display case. And, yeah, right? Uh, so basically what happens is, you know, he, he has this, it actually kind of looks like the little zoo, the little Zeus uh, thing from Clash of the Titans where he cleaps all his clay men. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, each time he, each time he puts one of these wooden dolls in there, the soul of the child like feeds the tree and grows these like pods that house, um, basically his troll, uh, Kins, uh seeds that can grow into these fucking troll army. Well, you know, once the tree of might gets all the vines all over the entire world, the, the fruit from the tree of might will bloom, and you eat that, and you get super powerful, yeah. right? Isn't that, isn't that what we're talking about? I think so. Yeah, that's exactly how it happens. The troll tree of might.
And the troll tree Just, of I had to get that joke out there. I'm sure it's already been said by other people that have covered this movie, but that's where my brain goes. So Ernest goes to back to Eartha Kitt's house, and he's like, he's like, there's a troll. I let him out. Fuck. And she's like, oh, you did it, didn't you? I know you did. <laughs> she's like, she's like you're, you're fucking so stupid, Ernest. God. I, I, the fucking wind was blowing. So she opens, you know, she grabs her Crookshank book. Right next to the Munchie book is the is the Trantor Troll book. She, like, knocks over the Necromonicon, the book from the Mummy. like she's... The Santa Goldberg book's in there somewhere. Yeah, brushes it to the side. She's like, go away, Aura, not now. <laughs> Bastion fucking just grabs it and runs out of there. That's that's where I put this. So uh, she opens it up and he's like, that's him. That's the guy. Troll man. Yeah, she says like the poem, right? Where like, you know, uh, after the souls of five, an evil army shall arise or whatever. And he's like, is there any more pictures? <laughs> She's like, no, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's like, you're the descendant of Phineas World. You're going to have to stop this troll. And he's like, why me? Why me? She's like, you're the seventh son of the seventh son. The great redneck hope, she says. Yeah. I, okay. That the great redneck hope split me in half. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so Ernest goes and starts, his first reaction is to stop this thing is to warn everybody. And he's just running down the street with a fucking megaphone. <laughs> And he's like, troll, there's a troll on the loose. Well, they, you know, he runs all the way to the Tulip Brothers shop. Oh, my God. These guys. Bobby and Tom. Bobby and Tommy are a fucking treasure, okay? like Also, the only Ernest film that Bobby appears in without, uh, I forget the name of the other actor, but it's not Tom. Ma no, they're always together, aren't they? In all, in all the Ernest films. It's a different. It's a different dude. I want to say maybe maybe in some of them. I really like these characters immediately because I didn't need three of their Ernest movies to understand it. Like the moment I saw him, like oh, you're modern day snake oil salesman, um, and you will do literally anything for a quick buck. And every one of your schemes is a get rich quick thing. I oh get yeah. It. And yeah. it, like immediately, I was like, I get it, and it's fine, and I like it. But the, the comedy here is fucking so on point. Like, again, like everybody's turned up to a fucking all. All the comedic actors in this film are turned up to a hundred. Um, so he the we cut to the Tulip Brothers, and they're like making a fucking commercial for their for their store, <laughs> and this guy's telling jokes, or he's like, <laughs> "What? Okay, th this movie has some lines and isms I've never heard in my life, and I will never hear again." Like. In this commercial, he's telling me, like, he's like, are fat cats afraid of fast cars? <laughs> he goes, he goes, I got some, man comes up to me, he says, can I get a good deal on some surplus uh, government canned food and in an in a outboard motor? And I said, does a one look at duck swim in a circle? <laughs> and, and every time he tells a one-liner, Bobby hits, like, the symbol, but grabs it so it doesn't make too much noise. Yeah, he does, he does like, the dumb thing, you know? My favorite is when, uh, when Ernest asks if the whole whole thing comes with the record of of over a hundred troll love songs and he's like do rattlesnakes kiss carefully <laughs> <laughs> well because that's the whole crutch of this scene i mean we, we it gets broken up into like two or three parts uh but ernest comes in fucks up the commercial goes on about the troll and this guy gets the idea in his head <laughs> oh <laughs> troll extermination yeah oh yeah we got what you need ernest doesn't he just immediately roll out like a bunch of like you know rip off troll themed products like <laughs> yes he goes yeah when i was stationed in germany i was the leader of the the troll hunting division or some shit <laughs> but the realization when <laughs> when ernest says trolls he's like Tro trolls trolls oh yeah we got some shit for you buddy right and then by the end of it him and bobby uh you know got him signing some contract that's gonna cost ernest like over twelve hundred dollars and he's like oh okay yeah sure and that's that's when he drops the line about the album. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking troll bait, troll spray, troll fucking uh, sh troll away strips, all kinds of horse shit. I, I get the impression that Ernest is the type of person that just has like all this money in their bank account because like they don't really have any hobbies other than like you know cleaning his garbage cans. He pretty much just like has money in the bank because he's got nothing else going on. So he's just like sitting on like a hundred thousand dollars, and he's just like, yeah, twelve hundred bucks. That doesn't seem like too much. Oh man, you think he keeps it in? his mattress maybe <laughs> maybe i would love the idea of Ernest being like stupidly wealthy but because he's such a like a simple like kind-hearted dude he just doesn't see the like 
the potential value of millions of dollars if he just fucking spends it on everybody else. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know definitely in Ernest Goes to Camp, he definitely does not have millions of dollars, and that is a plot point of that film. But uh, we can dream. Maybe he got it from, uh, from, oh, that was his name. Nash is his name in Ernest Goes to Jail. Maybe he, like, found, like, Nash's, like, stash, uh, his cash stash. And there you go. Yeah, you know, it was at the end of, like, a, a rock uh, wall next to a cherry tree or some shit. <laughs> Since, and since Jim Varney's no longer around, and, s- and thus Ernest is no longer around, like, I think my head headcanon is like, oh, no, he won the lottery. Like, <laughs> um, Yeah, maybe, yeah. So we get this quick scene with Liz and Kenny, and she's like, Joey never came home last night. And she's like, yeah, that's just, yeah, what are you talking about? That's bullshit. There's no troll. Ernest is just a fucking whatever. Joey would drop that if you told him to hold his breath. I trust him all the time, except for, like, two times in the movie where it counts. <laughs> Until they see the wooden fucking doll. They're like, Joey didn't come home last night. Elizabeth's like, Joey would die sitting down. Like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's always falling down hills and shit. He would pull a muscle like pouring a glass of milk or something. <laughs> Relevant. And, and Kenny gets Elizabeth to get get off her ass and start moving because he's like, oh, what are you afraid to go to the treehouse? Uh, come on, let's race. And then I guess that like lights a fire under both of their butts. You know what's fucked up about that scene? Like they're going to the treehouse. She's outside with her bike. But neither of them take their bikes. Well, they don't want to be seen by local bully Jamie because they're afraid to push them into a pit and steal their bike. <laughs> again, are they? Tra- you know, they're passing that pit on the way there. But like, oh, totally. They also have to go across the again the fucking MDU field. It takes like how? Like, where is this place? I mean, they're kind of like in the dark forest, to be quite honest. <laughs> like they they are always in this forest. So uh, we cut back to the Hackmore place, and Ernest comes downstairs in his fucking RoboCop regalia. Oh my god! I, this is when he says one of his like long-winded like bibble babble just assault of words that were <laughs> i know he uses megabytes wrong but i can't tell you where or how he, i i'm pretty sure the end of his like virtual reality troll fighter numero uno or some shit like that yeah need i say more i love i also love like he'll do stupid shit like this and then three seconds later in the same scene all of it's gone <laughs> exactly. Every ounce yeah. of it. <laughs> I forgot that's how that played out, and I was like, shit! He didn't <laughs> use just, any of that? It's just gone. So they're like at the, they go to the treehouse, and Trantor's there, and they like run away, or they think they hear some shit, and they like run away to the Hackmore house to like get Ernest. And on the way there, Trantor's like stalking them, and then just decides to just pick off a skateboarder that just happens to be coming down the street. He, he, yeah. yeah. He murders the kid that Ant Man sees when he comes back after the snap. He's like, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> like he just starts crying and then fucking Trantor eats him. Like kid, kid gives him the finger and then Trantor picks him off at the end of the street. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Hackmore drops a little bit more lore and they and they talk about um the heart of a child and a mother's care, which comes up later uh, about how to stop the troll. And uh, she's like, she, she's like, she's like, you don't understand that he's gonna go after all the kids, and then he, and then the whole world's doomed. And he's like, well, just the kids, right? <laughs> and then we also find out that when these pods touch the ground, all hope is lost. Like you don't know the details on that quite yet. Well, I mean, do we know the details? Do we know that that's the uh, army, or is it just like, don't let this happen? It's bad. Well, it's alluded to, but I don't know. She doesn't say mention about the pods or whatever. Not yet, anyway. Or, or maybe she does. She's like, pods, pods. And she's really creepy in this scene. She's ratcheted it up to a thousand. A child's heart. <laughs> yeah, she's fucking crazy in this in this scene. Right. They're like, you gotta kill a kid? Because uh, you slam cut to Ernest's fucking plan, <laughs> this uh, literal Ernest dumpster. He's a human sacrifice is the last ditch effort. Me, I'm a trap guy. And uh, he has this lollipop that he takes out and sets down on this dumpster. He fucking has this dumpster that says trolls and, like, free kids inside or some shit. Yeah. And there's, like, a beeper on it, and then he has, like, a doll hanging, like like, like the bait. I, I'm, I'm looking at him like, oh, oh, okay, you fucking canceled this year, man. Be careful. <laughs> <No. laughs> I love that he calls it a troll motel. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, to, to top it all off, he goes to take the lollipop back, sticks it in his mouth, but he knocks, like, the, the door. The stick off, yeah. Gets his hand caught. Oops. Yeah. There's a great visual gag where he, he looks back and forth a couple times before, before he screams. <laughs> Imagine Ernest being the one who kills Shredder. Oh, my God. Oops. <laughs> Oops. You know he would be like, <laughs> And, like, would rub his hands together. <laughs> yeah. 
You gotta see some more Ernest movies. You'd really have a, p- a picture would already be painted for you, Connor. Oh yeah, but it's an accident, Connor. Like there's like again, like he has like a lollipop next to the fucking switch, and he like accidentally grabs it and bumps it, and that's what happens to Shredder. <laughs> yeah, he like he drops a lollipop, stands up, his head whacks the fucking garbage lever as soon as Casey Jones goes to pull it, and he's like, "Oops." <laughs> then we have this scene where I guess I don't know if Ernest trails these kids because he's keeping an eye on them to keep them safe, or it's just happenstance. But after, you know, Elizabeth and Kenny had saw Trantor, or thought they saw Trantor, and, and that whole sequence of events happened, they're walking home together. Hey, I think they dr- he drives them home or whatever. I guess, is that the implication? Well, yeah, Ernest, like, drives them home and, like, drops off Elizabeth, and and, and uh, Kenny's like, you gotta stay home because you're a girl, and this is troll <laughs> fighting stuff. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> 1991 leers its uh, ugly head. Rears it, excuse me. I, yeah, I would say it's the 90s. To be fair, there's not too much of that in this. I, I, yeah, there's only one other scene that like feels super dated today uh, that, that I'll mention when we get there. So this is where Elizabeth gets it because she goes inside and... I, well, hold on. She gives uh, Kenny a kiss. Come on. We can't leave that detail out. Oh, yeah. She gives him a little smooch. Yeah. Even, even Ernest is like a puppy in the fucking truck watching. He's doing a John Wayne impression to this girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. On and off. No need to thank me, little lady. I'm like, she doesn't know who the fuck John Wayne is, dude. I don't like black people. <laughs> <laughs> I played a Chinaman once. You know he picked this up from dad at home, you know, quoting it. Ernest quotes it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I had a culture. It was weird back then it's still weird but in different ways sure well they they just didn't know that john wayne was a racist piece of shit question mark did you ever see when marlon brando won the oscar for the godfather that's all i'm gonna say just look up that video i have not yeah he is being a major racist asshole that entire time people had to hold him back he was being such an asshole marlon brando really okay i'll give you the quick version basically marlon brando refused to accept the honor so he sent a native american spokesperson in his place and they talked about basically how america has basically fucked over the Native Americans and the indigenous people, and John Wayne took great offense to that. Fuck that guy. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. let's, uh, we're talking about Ernest. Let's not, uh, focus on the negative here. Yeah. John Wayne's dead. <laughs> I'm, I, <laughs> John Wayne's dead. I'm just trying to, just, just trying to make that point, uh, that, that he always sucked. And he can't defend himself, so fuck him. <laughs> Why don't you go fuck yourself, Pilgrim? However, I will gladly defend Jim Varney's death. <laughs> sure. God, I hope that doesn't come out that he's like a racist asshole. I'm sure he's not, but I'm just saying. So so Kenny gets that peck on the cheek, and he's he's uh, he, his heart is a flutter, and he heads home. I thought you said he's hard as a rock, and I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, God. Well, I, I don't know. He might be. We, we've, we've gone down that territory many times on this show. Do we want to go down it now? Grab that sock, baby. Here we go. Well, your body's going do some changes. <laughs> oh my god! A fucking <laughs> a coming of age uh, uh, Ernest talk? I don't think so. Ernest teaches health class. Is that the next movie? <laughs> It's just basically that scene from Bushwhack just replaced Stern with fucking Varney. This is my friend Slim Goodbody. <laughs> you ever wake up with something sticky in your pants? Or oh, oh my god. You know what I mean? It always comes back to come. <laughs> it always yeah. comes back to come. Walk in the movie dumpster. Gets hair in weird places, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, see ya. Uh, so Elizabeth goes up to her room. Hail of a storm. Hail of a storm. <laughs> So she goes up to her room, and her mom's like, "What? aren't you going to get dressed or whatever? Where's your costume? And she's like, I'm not going out, because Joey never came home last night. She's like, Joey's a fucking moron. Of course he never came <laughs> He doesn't even know where he lives. <laughs> and mom's like, I don't give a shit about Joey. <laughs> she's like, I have company coming over. You better get in your fucking costume and come downstairs. I have to ask, do you think mom, uh, Elizabeth's mother, is friends with Amanda Plummer from Satan's Little Helper? Because when she goes downstairs, she either puts in earplugs or she's she's drinking something heavy because she does not hear what happens next. And I, I'm a little perplexed. She fucking ludes up. She MD oods up. Oh, she MD oods up. Uh, <laughs> this is the only one where I'm confused because how the fuck did Trantor get into this house? Well, I'm less confused about that. He's magical. I I, I don't give a shit. It's fucking magic. No, I know he's magic, but like nothing suggests that he could just appear in there. He's a fucking spirit. 
speedster, okay? That's the quick <laughs> oh my answer God. for all of these things. Scaffolding or some shit. Anyway, this big, this big fucking potato head is underneath the bed and then next to her on the bed. Right, because mom won't check under the bed for a monster. It's a whole thing. So she like looks under the bed and nothing's there, and then she comes up and oops there he is laying next to you in bed fucking scary he used to scare the shit out of me as a kid and and she screams very loud and nobody hears it that that scream we heard before my heart was in my throat i don't know about you guys i'm i'm just still just shocked that his fat head fit under the bed that's, that's what I'm the, saying. You're all talking about him tr- teleporting into this this room, and I'm like, that's not the least believable part of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's had her bed not raise as soon as he appeared under it. Like, yeah, right. I was gonna say she she felt two noses like from under the uh, mattress pushing up into her butt. She was like, wait a second. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, like princess and the pea. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? The princess and the schnoz. <laughs> Mom, I can't sleep on this. You're a princess. It turns out if it, you can feel the two trolls noses between this underneath this mattress because you're right pissy even if he laid totally flat his head so fucking big it would like push the whole the whole bed up yeah it's like stiffing a fucking beanbag under there i just imagine when she goes down there to look for the fucking teddy bear she sees his little legs like scrambling to try and get out the other <laughs> end she's like she's like what the fuck is this i was i was i'm thinking more like her mom comes in and like the bed is clearly elevated over like his stupid big body <laughs> and it's like just barely teetering she's like i've told you there's nothing under your bed now stop <laughs> with this nonsense and she's just like like a little just broadly gesturing the floor like <laughs> <laughs> and he's laying there completely still like if <laughs> yeah. i don't move no one will see me i love the idea of like one of this one side of the bed like elevated she opens up the closet door i'm telling you there's no shape in here michael myers just standing <laughs> there's <laughs> no boogeyman <laughs> donald pleasance comes in just shoots her mom six times oh uh, yeah the the mummy's in my closet look oh scary mummy monster squad anybody come on i have Never seen Monster Squad. What, what the fuck did you just say to me? Okay, well, eh, all right, we're doing that one now. <laughs> you know what? Jake from Slasher's podcast just like there's some ringing going off in his ears right now, and he doesn't know where to place it, and this is why. <laughs> Not yet. And then when he hears it, his fucking head is going to explode. I will tell you, Connor. To be fair to you, I watched it for the first time this year. No, I did. I watched it for the first time. Here's the thing, though, too. Like, so this movie included like. Because I think I told you guys a while ago I'd never seen this when we initially talked about doing it. Yeah, two years ago, yeah. It, it's come up on the show a couple times. Yeah. So every time that happens and I think about a movie that I've never seen that I should have seen in my childhood, I make no effort to watch it because I know it's going to come up here eventually. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing the end of it on TV a long time ago because I have very vivid memories of, I think, Dracula impaled on a mailbox or something? Uh, a fence post. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it being like, very graphic for my young eyes and being like what the fuck is this <laughs> you, you, know, you should look up the the wolfman scene <laughs> anyway actually just watch the fucking movie it's halloween watch the fucking movie yeah it, it's great so yeah she fucks out of the movie we don't see her again until the end yeah her and her fucking high ass pants <laughs> <laughs> this is the bear trap scene oh my god this is oh my favorite god. fucking scene in the movie um this is where also rimshot is like the funniest, like... He's dressed like a Boy Scout! <laughs> he is. <laughs> a little tent and everything. Jim Varney is... He's trying to set up this... It makes the bear trap in Ravenous look like a toy, okay? <laughs> and that thing killed two men. <laughs> it's, it's like, full body. It's, like, six feet wide. <laughs> this thing is... It's as long as Jim Varney is with both of his arms and legs stretched out across it. <laughs> this is some Looney Tune-ass shit. Um, and he's, like... The whole time he's just he's just talking like he's just doing his thing and like he's just he's using all the strength he has to set this thing up and like he makes it. What does he say to, to Rimshot initially? Dude, well, he needs that stick, man, so he can set the trap. Oh, that's right. He's like, yeah, bring that stick, Rimshot. Yeah. And Rimshot is dressed as a little kid. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, you know, Rimshot, you are one cute little dog, but you are one <laughs> ugly little child. And that's how. <laughs> and you see literally this. Dog is the best actor in the movie because he's holding this stick and he looks at him and he's like, What the fuck did you just say to me? And he keeps that look for a solid like two minutes while while Ernest is going off. And this stick, by the way, is like three times the size yeah. of this dog. And um 
like no tail wag and like it's like four cutbacks to this dog's blank fucking excuse me <laughs> face and it goes on until while well, Ernest is like hey hey yeah, rim, rim shot give me a stick come on get, get me quick quick come on yeah and then off camera Ernest is launched into the stratosphere and then finally Grimshot puts the stick down. <laughs> His fucking hat lands next to him and shit. <laughs> and he's just screaming. It's one of those things too because he goes uh, it's like a Looney Tune thing where like you, you like fold up in the trap and like like be like backwards backbreaker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole thing was supposed to be Rimshot was going to be the bait because he was going to be a kid. Oh, you know what? I didn't even. Th- yeah. That's so obvious, and it just went over my fucking head. As you discuss, uh, he goes, as you disguised <laughs> as a yummy child. Yeah, see, I, I put the stick and the trap together, but not the kid. Okay, yeah, that makes. I got you. Yeah, it's the only time in the movie that Rimshot's dressed up as anything, but it's, <laughs> it's the funniest looking thing. He has a little hat and everything. <laughs> so I guess to recoup from that, he's like, all right, we got to go stock up at the 7 Eleven or whatever. Oh, he's like, the blood sugar's getting a little low. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He needs some fucking, uh, I don't know what, ho-hos and yodels and shit and chocolate milk. (laughs) He grabs like 10 packages of ho-hos. Dude, this was what I went to the store and got like the first time I smoked weed, okay? Like, (laughs) I just walked in and like, and like, for people who have never done that before, your first experience with the munchies is like, I will eat off my fingers if you don't bring me sugar. (laughs) Well, first, second... Third, yeah, hundredth, thousand, subsequent times until you know indefinitely. But no, the I think the first experience with it is like I w- I have the sensation and I also have money. I will go cause chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I will buy a quart of of chocolate milk and just chug it in line. Oh my god! <laughs> like also, I'm looking at this. I'm like, man, his bowels are going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like eleven like like uh, Hostess cupcakes. And like, yes. yeah, a cart and a half, like a, a half gallon of chocolate milk. Well, the best part is that's a great visual gag in and of itself. But the troll has like followed him into this store. Yeah. And this uh, this clerk notices the troll. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, this poor stuttering Jimmy here uh, is either having a stroke or a heart attack or both while he's trying to like pantomime to to whirl that this troll's behind him trying to, trying to kill him. Ernest is like, well, I have charades. I love charades. <laughs> And has one of my favorite lines in the whole movie because Jimmy is trying to like literally do charades to him and he's like, two, sounds like two, two, T T for two, T for two. And then yeah. Jimmy pulls out the gun to shoot the troll and he's like, whoa. And, and, and Jimmy's like passing out and he's like, wow, Jimmy, when you play charades, you really play for keeps. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, two barrels. <laughs> two barrels. And in this process, he, like, throws a fucking chocolate milk behind him, and it scares off the troll. And uh, he leaves Jimmy to his fate. Nobody knows if he survived the night. Oh, he sure does. Can you imagine if this movie ended with uh, Robocop walking in behind him, just shooting the troll dead, and then just... <laughs> Shoots the troll in the dick? <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation, and then just fucking <laughs> leaves. <laughs> um, no, he comes... Jimmy comes back in a big way to fucking chase off some kids later. He does. Oh! Yeah, same dude. Oh, yeah, that was Jimmy. You're right. Yeah, he gets he gets punked by a bunch of Lost Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. Fuck him. And Kenny, Kenny's just like wandering the fucking streets by himself and like runs into th- <laughs> this kid, Greg, who's trick or treating by himself with no other kids on the street. So, so Trantor's like, Trantor like uses uh, uh, Elizabeth's voice to like trick Kenny and then uh, he grabs this kid, Greg, in the, uh, in the Native American costume and turns it into a fucking doll. Like right before our eyes, this is the first time we like see it happen. So then we go to the police station, and again, I, I don't know how Elizabeth's parents don't hear her scream as she's grabbed. They're just like, yeah, she she didn't even want to go to the party. We don't know where she is. And can we also talk about the fact that Joey's parents haven't shown up at fucking all? <laughs> Actually, I think Joey's parents is the guy in the bubblebee costume who's like, yeah, my garbage hasn't been picked up in two weeks. Doesn't care about his kid. He's worried about the garbage. We never see his parents. His parents don't show up until the very fucking end. And they're like, Joey. And you're like, who the fuck are you? I thought that too. But that bald guy is 
in the stuff. He's just he's he's in the station. He's just like, what about Joey? Like on the last, <laughs> on the side while everybody's screaming. He's like, but what about Joey? <laughs> I think he's, I mean, obviously he must have a kid that's lost because he shows up again later in the movie. But I just thought that was hilarious that he just had some bitch about Ernest not doing his job <laughs> while all these people are looking for their lost kids. Oh, yeah, the Bumblebee guy. I'm having company tomorrow. That fuck hasn't picked up my garbage in three days. Dude, it's like 10 o'clock at night. Like every, And like everybody's supposed to be at like a costume party <laughs> on Halloween. Also, whose garbage gets picked up every day? <laughs> Beats the shit out of me once a week. He says, he says it's been like two days yeah where are you from gotham city <laughs> <laughs> he pays that extra money he gets that two or two to three time a week pickup he pays extra for it what kind of slum are you creating if you'd have that much garbage he's got a lot of you know he's got a lot of empty chucky chicken uh buckets he's trying to get rid of oh is that what the th that's yeah there you go it's really charnetsky is what i'm trying to say here in disguise he has one night to be with the mortals it's halloween night of course it's the thinnest veil man between worlds. You know, he was he was summoned to the afterlife. He ascended on Halloween night so he can return. Uh, he can descend on Halloween night. <laughs> he did. Technically. It's all technicality. Again, Demonic Toys last year. Uh, Trick or Trash season two. Go listen to it <laughs> when you get a chance. After this episode. 66 years. Sir. 66 episodes ago, possibly. I, I, it is possible. Probably doesn't line up, but let's say it does. Um, All the while, Kenny's being chased by Trantor. And Kenny hops this fucking fence. And this little man. <laughs> is like a fucking bullet train through this fence just breaks it apart <laughs> oh yeah it's so funny looking it's awesome the only thing that stops him is that kenny runs into the milkman from the midnight hour oh yeah <laughs> he's all pissed off dancing on the top of his milk truck and uh that of course because it's milk uh <laughs> trantor bugs the fuck out of there if you haven't picked up on it yet he doesn't like milk yeah they really want you to figure that out before Ernest. guy i haven't picked up those seeds yet i don't know what you're talking about maybe what, what could they be working at here imagine trantor running through what's his nuts house from razorback like just <laughs> oh my god he steals the kid <laughs> turns him into a wooden doll as he runs out they're like they're like like you fucking idiot it's not a raise it's not a it's not a boar it's an actual troll why didn't you tell us dude he fucking vermin trolls <laughs> my wife saw him missing can you tell me where she is trolls so then we cut to Ernest, and he's like in his truck he's in the truck again just fucking cruising around and the uh the troll alarm goes off for his dumpster his troll motel if you will he goes to pick this fucking thing up, and he's and he doesn't even look inside. He's just like he's like, "Yep, uh, uh, what do you think about that, Squid Lips? You fuck." And he like picks up this dumpster and like drives it to the fucking uh, sheriff station where like Kenny is with his dad and the mayor. And not a beat before that, the mayor's like, "Oh, you gotta do something. You gotta do something, sheriff. My fucking my kids are missing. You gotta put out an APB because I'm important because I'm a rich white guy and I I come first before everybody else." And uh, like you said, right on cue, Ernest shows up. He's got the troll, and uh, you know the sheriff's like trying to write him off immediately, but he's like. All right, fine. This is the one time in my life I'll listen to my kid. All right, Ernest, don't blow this for Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucked, kid. It's all riding on you, son. Because they, they push this kid aside constantly throughout the film. He, he keeps telling him, oh, it's a troll, Dad. Which, again, on one hand, in reality, sh shut up, Kenny. You don't, what, what are you, crazy? But, but. From from an audience standpoint, like, come on, listen to the kid. Come on. Or at least look into it a little bit. It's doubly, it's, it's, it's twice as fucked up later on when his dad is incapacitated and going like, go get him, son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go get him, Kenny. Of course, they go out to the garbage truck and uh, Ernest uh, reveals the troll, but uh, oops. Not not the robot this time. The Ernest actually says oops uh, because it's the uh, bullies. It's the Murdochs. Let me ask you a question. What the fuck were they doing in there? Why did those kids crawl in that fucking dumpster? They thought there were kids in there they could make fun of? I can't get a question mark. I assumed it was because they knew that it had to have been Ernest's trap or somehow related to the other kids. And they snuck in there to try and like scare them. That was my assumption. Yeah. I think that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, because I'm thinking to myself like, this is so dumb. Well, because there's that scene that we didn't really talk about, but when Kenny goes home originally, they're hiding like in Kenny's family boat to scare him in these troll costumes. Yeah. So I think they're just, just like Pissy said, they want to fuck with these guys and fuck with Ernest, and they paid for it this time. Yeah, dearly. 
Oh, right before he opens this, Ernest is like, well, I'm going to squish him for you, Sheriff. Imagine if he fucking squished these kids in this crash compactor. Did <laughs> <laughs> no. you just see the blood drip out the back of the, gar- uh, the garbage oh, truck? Oh, my God. <laughs> he never breaks eye contact with the mayor the whole time, too. With, like, just the sounds of, like, <laughs> bones crunching. <laughs> the kids are screaming. Screaming. So the mayor sees this happen and, and, of course, flips out and says, You know what, Ernest? That's it. Turn in your keys, your badge, and your truck. Uh, you're fired. And uh, Ernest looks as sad as a fucking dog. And even the sheriff's got to lay it on even thicker. Uh, Ernest, why don't you grow up? Leave my fucking kid alone. <laughs> Stop hanging out with this nine-year-old. And, he, and he, uh, he goes to Kenny, and this is where Kenny does him dirty. He goes, come on, Kenny, you, you, you know there's a troll. You saw it, right? And Kenny just kind of shrugs his shoulders and gets in the car with Dad. Makes Ernest feel like a real piece of shit. <laughs> he literally just throws his hands up in the air. He's like, sorry, Ernest, you, you fuck. I'm sorry, you failed. Not my fault. <laughs> you blew my only opportunity to get through to my dad. Thanks, yeah, Ernest. Yeah, Oh, f- fuck me for suddenly having all the pressure on me. <laughs> Why'd you, you, it was, I was carrying that on. It was a heavy load on my back. And there it goes. See, they get in the car. They get in the car, and Dad's like, "Told you you'd fuck this up, Kenny." Yeah, I'd like to be the uh, fly on the wall for that conversation, home. Well, he doesn't even take a moment. He takes him to the fucking dance, the or the not the the Halloween party, whatever. You think you think it's like a school dance, but it's like for the whole town. It just happens to be at the school. Yeah, I guess. Well, it is because the mayor's there and the Tulip brothers are there. We find out. I know it's weird though because like there's. Only like five kids and the rest are adults. <laughs> I guess that's all Disney could rent out. All the other kids are in the tree. Mm. But Ernest is moping all upset that he screwed everything up. But uh, Rimshot, going to make him feel better about it, licks him a bunch. Yeah, he reminds him. He bites him on the leg. He's like, come on, stop being such an <laughs> asshole. And he's like, thanks, I needed that. I never knew when to quit. Just ask my fourth grade teacher. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the fucking... Oh my... This is so like... like Okay, so this movie doesn't have a formula, but it has like a, a structure. And this is so not part of that structure. And like it's fan-fucking-tastic. By the way, what does it say on the board? Because I missed it both times. I didn't actually read it. I think it's, I, I never learned how to quit, is what it says. It might. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and like he just says, like, I never learned how to quit. It cuts, it, yeah, he's like, yeah, just as my fourth grade teacher. It does a fucking cutaway to kid, adolescent Ernest in the same fucking clothes. <laughs> <laughs> writing on a chalkboard over and over again and his fourth grade teacher is like he never knew when to quit and then apropos of nothing Ernest just drags his fingernails down the chalkboard and the teacher backhands him it, it was either a, he never learned how to quit or it's he he will not he won't uh, you know run his his fingernails on the chalkboard because I think that's no it's not it says it won't br- I will not bring adult books to school <laughs> <laughs> I also think that this was kind of a missed opportunity. I think Jim Varney should have played the fourth grade teacher. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> yes, oh, that is such yeah. a good idea. He never knew when to quit. That's that. That would have put the fucking cherry on top, though. The John cherry on top. <laughs> John Cherry wishes he thought of that idea, honestly. <laughs> I love the Foley when she smacks him in the back of the head because his fucking face hits the board. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> it's so, everything about this, like, it's like a second and a half long. It's so fucking funny. And then we immediately cut to uh, Hackmore revealing her wooden friends. Well, this is her whole plot. See, she she was pissed off that Ernest released the troll, but then she was like, not... And I think this is why, because she's like, guess what? I got these, I got my sister and these other kids that were turned to fucking wood dolls. And uh, if Ernest stops them, I can turn them back. So that's like her like whole plot point. Imagine if like she brings, she's like, she's like, Ernest, these wooden dolls. He's like, kill them for fire. And he's fucking throws them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, these fucking these fucking kids are gonna have such a culture shock. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like uh, Frankenstein Unbound. For- Forget the culture shock. The amount of radiation in the air and on the bodies of those people <laughs> living the time would kill those kids dead immediately, okay? Like the ozone, even even like even like a uh, 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 disease or something. I mean, they're like 300 years removed. All right, don't, you don't have to worry about COVID. Somebody sneezes with a common cold, they're done for. Dude, one of those kids farts next to those colonial fuckers are dropping dead. Like. <laughs> Well, well, that we also find out Trantor only needs one kid, and uh, Ernest shows up. 
he pulls up to the treehouse and he's like, ah, check out these Brussels sprouts. I never liked Brussels sprouts. He's like, I hate Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I feel you, Jim. I, I, I guess he leaves to like say, "All right, well, we checked the treehouse. No one's here, even though Trantor's like staring at him and he doesn't see him." All right, I guess we'll go to Hackmore's, and he pulls away. No, this is a great gag because Trantor runs <laughs> from behind the fucking tree, and Varney opens the door and hits this fucking thing in the face, and it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Very leprechaun. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, this next scene is very leprechaun or child's play. Uh, you know, you know. Chucky always loves to attack people in the fucking car. This is terrifying. This scene, and it's probably the best sequence uh, of the film. It's also fucking gross because this thing, like, at some point, like, goes face first in his windshield, and there's just this giant, sticky green smear from his <laughs> gross double noses. Well, that's how Trantor lets uh, Ernest know he's there. Mm. Leaves his mark. Yeah. Marks his territory with his fucking snot. Ugh. <laughs> Dude, this thing, this thing rushes onto the roof as Ernest is, like, freaking out and pulls out, like, a 12-inch dagger and starts stabbing into, the, like, the, <laughs> the, the roof of the car trying to get Ernest. And then never uses it again. No, he it seems he seemingly drops it. <laughs> um, he like jumps to the side of the car, and uh, Ernest, I guess Rimshot's on the ground still driving the car because <laughs> Ernest scrambles to Dude. the side <laughs> of the cab, and he like locks yeah. the door with his foot, and he's like, <laughs> gets a little too smart for you, and the fucking troll rips the door off. It's so good. Rimshot knows how to drive a car damn well too. This entire sequence has the dog driving the fucking truck while Ernest fights a troll in the bed of the truck. Yeah, he's like Kato to the Green Hornet. Like, where yeah. Kato's doing all the fucking <laughs> heavy lifting all the time. It's so good. There's, uh, there's so many good gags here. Like, he's fighting the troll, and he's got, like, hedge clippers. Oh, it, here's comes the knife, Sean, because he, like, cause he like cuts the hedge clippers with his fucking sword, like, cuts it in half. Right, right. But then Ernest just finds, like, a heap of rope. Yeah, and just, like, lobs it at this thing, and it falls all over the back of the uh, truck, like the bed of the truck, and hits the ground. And Ernst is like, <laughs> And then the truck stops moving because this thing grabbed the rope and is, like, literally holding the truck in place. When it's pulling the fucking truck and it's, like, feet are, like, digging up, like, the pavement and stuff. I don't know. It's cool. Oh, yeah. And then he's like, Rimshot, hit reverse. <laughs> this dog paws this fucking, this, the, 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 uh, the lever to put it in reverse. And uh, we get one of the best scenes of the whole movie because it's just like, oh, how about the, the bumper sandwich, booger lips? Here it comes. I love all the names he calls him throughout the movie. Like, they're all so good. I love what happens to him when he gets hit with the fucking <laughs> yes. truck. He, he literally gets, <laughs> he looks He's decapitated. <laughs> this fucking thing goes down. Oh my god! It's it's always fun. It's never not funny to see it because they just have this <laughs> dummy in the middle of the road and they literally back over this thing and and Ernest is like bonsai. <laughs> there's there's something that's like evergreen about the physical comedy and like the weird physics of watching a dummy in like a big effect shot just get fucking destroyed. <laughs> Um, it's so fun. Like, um, I always reference the end of Nightmare on Elm Street because that ending, any tension's ruined when Freddy's arm grabs inflatable doll uh, Nancy's mom and just drags her through that small two-inch hole in the fucking door. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, come on. I kind of love no, it. No, I love it, too. I love it, too. But, man, it, when she gets picked up, she is just a straight line. Like, there's no physics or anything. She just, sure. <laughs> just gets sucked in. <laughs> Right through that fucking hole. And yeah, it's same effect here. It's like this big fucking, you know, inanimate object or like non-living object getting destroyed by a car. <laughs> and then he, uh, I guess uh, he, again, jumped in the air with the speed force, teleported, we're not really sure, jumped out of the, uh, you know, script and uh, lands on the hood of the car as soon as Ernest thinks he lost it. So he like screams and like blows Ernest into a fucking... Uh, barrel and he like gets thrown off the back of the truck and then the tulip brothers are driving down the road and bobby has like <laughs> the uh uh the um what do you what do you call it uh, uh a billboard paper of himself yeah and tom is like so they're they're both rigged together like the safety harness so if one falls <laughs> they can catch them but tom is on the ground already to safety and Tom is struggling to put this fucking, th uh, uh, whatever his name, Bobby, 
is struggling to get this shit up there because he just has no balance and this paper keeps getting crumpled up and he's trying to fix it. Dude, he goes safety first. It's just a literal rope a, to this guy, to yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he pulls him. He's like, come on, let's get out of here. And he just falls off the fucking billboard. Because the whole scene is he's trying to set up this new billboard and it's not working, so they get stuck to him. Meanwhile, Tom is on the phone with Ernest, who's freaking out the whole time. And he's like, oh, yeah, Ernest, you're in trouble. Okay, yeah, all right. Red leader to squad leader. Okay, yeah, all right. And then, like Joe was explaining, they're driving down the street, and Bobby has this fucking part of the billboard still stuck to the whole <laughs> front of his body, and gag. you don't see it until the last possible moment to realize, oh, shit, he has no idea where he's driving. No, but he's driving the car with it on. And Ernest, yeah, he gets whacked uh, by the car <laughs> and just goes careening off in another direction. He shows up at the Hackmore place. She fucking tries to get him out of it with a giant can opener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, they knew what kind of movie oh, they were making. Oh, for sure. Ernest finds two pages stuck together in the fucking lore book. That is a weird joke, I have to say, because like that that line now has such you know obviously different meanings. <laughs> like when you go like, wow, well, these two pages were stuck together. Well, after we talked about cum for the last two and a half hours, sure. Exactly. It's almost like it was written in the stars. <laughs> yeah, but who's fucking cranking it to the Trantor pictures? Miss Hagborn. <laughs> Miss Hackmore. Clearly. She's a squirter. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, what do you think she does with those little dolls? You know, they were just inanimate objects for the last hundred years. She's sticking the uh, wooden figures of her friends up her vagina, and she's getting off on them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can always count on you to take, like, something I thought was risque and just, like, just fucking assassinate it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It'll never not happen. As long as the idea comes in my mind, it's coming out of it. There's that There's that word again. And everyone is coming in your mind, I think. <laughs> yeah, in and out of this it. This is the filthiest episode we've ever done. Ah, you gotta go back and listen to all those other ones to, you know, get the tally. It's also one of the things where, uh, like, I wouldn't put it past Eartha Kit either, you know? Well, Eartha Kit also, like, tried to audition for Catwoman for Batman Returns, but is showing up to Tim Burton's house dressed as Catwoman, and he said, never let that woman near this movie or me again. So Ernest pulls the pages apart and he's like, oh, look at this. There's an extra, there's two pages stuck together. And he's like, he's like, look, uh, one can destroy it, the troll with M-I-K. Because there's like, a, it looks like there's like a letter rubbed out. Jamie. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you did that on purpose. <laughs> Everything gets rubbed out. He got it right on the L, right? And then that's why the pages were stuck together? Oh, yeah. Also, the word the word in question is also hilariously coincidental. So so he's in the background coming together with this Miak answer, like muttering to himself about it. Miak! Authentic Bulgarian Miak! Meanwhile, Eartha Kit is legitimately trying to solve the riddle, and he's like in the background talking to himself about this shit. No, I love her character at this point in the movie because she's always like... Every time she's seen, she's always, like, looking off the side going, like, yes, the next step is complete. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, again, she's, she has her own fucking plot going on. Yeah, she's always, like, three steps ahead of the story and the audience. I love it. But she's also just letting it happen, kind of. Yeah. Hoping for the best. And then we go to this, again, this weird party, at the Halloween party at the, at the gymnasium. Fucking Tom Tulip's there, and he's, like, kiwi free. He's, like, selling shit. <laughs> yeah, kiwi fruit or some bullshit. Shit. Kiwi fruit, uh, stir fry sushi or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, and then uh, Ernest gets there with Hackmore, and he's just running down the hallway. There's a troll in the dungeon. Now there's 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 something going on congruently with this because he goes into the um the place looking for the troll, and he's trying to warn everybody. But then outside, Hackmore sees this little girl and her mother. And her mother's, like, dressed as this pizza lady or whatever, and the little girl's in, like, a teddy bear costume. Munchie's wife, obviously. <laughs> pizza mess, obviously. And the whole scene is just to to hit home the mother's care thing where, like, it's, like, unconditional love or, or what have you. You know what I mean? Right, because they argue that they hate each other, and then they realize, oh, sh she hates her costume. Yeah. Oh, wait, I really do love you, Mom. I do love you, daughter. Come in for a hug. And it's saccharine as shit. Oh, yeah. Plot device. I also relate to this, but the, ba the, the back half of it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, son. I hate you, Mom. And then we just both walked away. <laughs> It is definitely, like Joe said, plot device. It, it it feels really out of place in this movie, but you needed uh, 
you needed somebody to see this happen to put the pieces together. Yeah. And we cut to O'Doyle, and he's like, eh, scary costume, because Trantor, like, walks up next to him behind the stage. <laughs> and then he, like, punches Trantor, and then Trantor fucks him up and turns him into a fucking doll. And then all is revealed because the, the, the stage curtain falls down, and everybody finally sees the troll. And this is uh, when Ernest rolls up his sleeves. Oh, man. He's ready to fight. Your history, pal. You're Elvis. I do. I, yeah. I do love that. Like, you're Elvis. So he's like, he's like, yeah, I, I finally got one that can stop you. And he's like, Miak. <laughs> and he's like, Miak. He's like, yeah, I, you didn't think I could find it this time of year, did you? <laughs> but I'm a little too light on my feet. He cracks this thing. He's like, eat Miak and die. And this, again, his signature movie like screams at Ernest and he like flies into like an ice cream machine. Conveniently. He collides like the bottom of a popcorn machine first, um, like head first through it, because like every time Ernest is assaulted by this guy, there's usually some kind of like plunder or something that he gets like tossed through. Yeah, a dairy based uh, trap, if you will. Yeah, he always uh, falls into milk. It's like little, it's like hardcore wrestling matches. Like every time there's some kind of attack, like someone's getting put through a table, and yeah, he gets like he gets like he slides across the floor, goes head first through this fucking like popcorn machine, and then yeah, and then hits an ice cream machine that starts pouring all over him. Which just made me want ice cream so badly, by the way. And then we get the saddest scene in the movie. Yeah. Rimshot trying to defend its owner. It's its dear friend, Ernest. And you, you don't find out what happens right away, but you could probably guess. Because you just hear a sound. Well, and then they don't, sh- they, like, they don't show you. You hear a sound. And then, like, everyone gathers around him. And he's like, where's Rimshot? Well, right. Well, because the troll comes up to him and gets scared because of the ice cream. Right and and disappears and then everyone comes up around. Yeah, him. and everyone's like, "You okay?" He's like, "Where's my dog?" Which is like one in my profession. Ugh. Kenny just walks over Rimshot, and Ernest just breaks down. Yeah, and then he he finally he like vows revenge on the troll. Finally, dude, he looks like a bagel chip. A bagel chip. Yeah, he does. Like or like a doorstop or something. Like those like logs you buy at the fucking grocery store to toss in your fucking fire. The fucking Duraflame yeah. log. <laughs> yeah. So Ernest is like, somebody with a runny nose is going to die. <laughs> and then he goes out to the fucking tree. Right. If he wasn't motivated yet, now he is. And then, like, everybody gathers up. They're like, okay, well, uh, I guess Ernest is uh, not uh, lying. I guess, so let's, I guess trolls are real. Trolls are real. So let's get a fucking mob and let's go kill this thing. <laughs> yeah. Kenny's just, like, yelling on the side. He's like, Dad, milk the troll. Milk kills it. And Cliff's like, can you shut the fuck up? I'm, I got to deal with these people. I have no context for this milk thing. I wasn't there when they read those last two pages, but I put it together. Daniel Baldwin didn't give me the fucking script this time. <laughs> yeah, he sent Thing out with it. <laughs> the Thing ran up and handed it to me. He sees the he sees the ice cream on Ernest. I guess whatever. He figures it out, sure. Puts it together, yeah. There's a good scene here with Eartha Kitt where uh, Kenny's dad's like, stay here, stupid. And he's like, okay. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, my dad told me to stay here. And she's like, oh, sometimes you got to do what you know is right, no matter what anybody tells you. And I thought that was a cool thing to kind of put in there. Yeah, I like that a lot. I don't think this movie has one misstep when it comes to, like, imparting any kind of, like, you know, like, here's, I learned something today. Um, I'll s- expand on that later, but yeah. So then the bully and his, his group of uh, lunks... Uh, lunkies, if you will. Um, they come up. They're like, yeah, he, he took my brother, so I guess I'm not going to be a dickhead to you anymore if you help me. How do we kill it? I kind of love this, too, because I'm like, oh, my God, they just had, like, a suddenly a loser's club is formed. <laughs> like The troll club. Yeah. Haven't you seen Little Monsters? <laughs> <laughs> With Buzz? <laughs> Feeds them that cat litter and, and, and uh, literal piss, and they somehow end up buddies at the end. <laughs> Literal decades since I've seen that movie, though. Ronnie Coleman fucking shows up, yeah, to light him up. So, yeah, they go out, and or, or so a couple things happen right here to culminate to the end of this film where, like, the kids go out to get their, their like, ammunition, which is milk now, and they're going to get, like, squirt guns like the fucking Lost Boys, and they, like, go back to Jimmy's convenience store and, like, gather all the shit up and, like, knock him into, like, a fucking display of Chex Mix. <laughs> Kenny is smiling and giggling to himself the entire time as he just rides this bike down the side of the milk aisle and just puts his arm out and just hopes for the best. He's like, I'm going to tell your father, Kenny, you fuck. He's like, fuck you, man. S- somewhere in this movie is a spinoff starring, uh, 
this this fucking store clerk about how his life was ruined one night when he saw a supernatural being and then was attacked by several kids. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> well, and then he moved to Dairy, Maine, and he became a pharmacist. Oh, oh, there he yes. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Keene's kid. Yeah, that's who that is. Yeah, that's him. Kind of looks like him. But they get they get their their uh, milk pistols ready. And Ernest shows up to the fucking treehouse before anybody else. So Trantor puts his last, puts uh, the last kid in the tree, and now the fu- the pods are finally fully bloomed and ready to drop. Ernest tries to run down fucking Trantor, gives him the old fucking child's play too. Yeah. Oh, this is when he rams him into the tree with the car. Yeah. And then he and then he hooks. He just disappears. Ernest goes to get out of the car, and he goes. Hey, you okay, Rimshot? He's like, uh, one of the advantages of being a wooden dog. <laughs> I mean, he's making jokes about who oh, who cares about a wooden dog? Wait, I can call you Splinter? <laughs> oh, you sure you can swim better. <laughs> <laughs> That's my other favorite joke in the movie. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so then these pods stop dropping, and uh, again, they don't uh, give you superpowers. I mean, in, at least in this movie, maybe in the MDU they do. They instead, uh, you know, as Ernest tries catching them, he comically drops them continuously until they're all in the ground. Sean, what if they're not the pods in the tree of might, but they're that fruit that Gohan ate in Dead Zone that got him really fucking high? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see, Ernest take a bite out of one of these things. That'd be kind of gross. Ew. They're not Easter eggs. Oh, man, they're Krite eggs? There you go. Ernest versus the Critters? Oh, my God, give that to me, too. So uh, these these pods drop, and they start burying themselves in the ground. And, like, this is such a crazy concept to me that this is in this fucking film. Oh, my God. Oh, it's like, you know, it's a fun kids movie to, like, now it's a pseudo-horror film. Oh, yeah, straight and, up. And, like, it just goes off the, it goes fucking off the deep end because, like, I didn't expect this. I expected this to be like Ernest versus Trolls because, like, my only visual reference to this movie was trailers. Um, and I just think remember, like, this particular sequence of scenes where, like, it's Ernest fighting a bunch of trolls. Um, but, like, that memory didn't click into my head until um, these pots started falling. I was like, holy fuck, this is the only thing I know from this movie. And I had no idea why I remembered it. <laughs> it, it it's gross because when these things bury themselves, they, like, grow into full-size trolls that, like, burst out of this, like, membranous skin underneath the ground. Ernest grabs, like, a fucking trash can lid and tries to, like, p- keep him down. I'll put a lid on this. Music. Now, I don't know if you I don't know if you guys want to go into everything. There's a lot of shit that happens in this scene, so I was figuring, like, we could just, like, highlight some shit. Sure, yeah. The parents show up is a key thing. Yeah, more to my point, like, the end of this movie becomes a fucking bedlam. Like, it's just a giant action sequence. I am so impressed with how I, it's like one thing keeps happening after another, and it's like these full effect sequences with these fucking trolls. Well, even if a couple look like the killer clowns, like that's like maybe two out of like the ten or twelve that they they have, which is insane when you think about it. And I'm glad I referenced Hook because like it actually kind of reminds me of the finale of Hook, where like it's this colossal action sequence involving a bunch of children and adults. Like the one thing I will say, and again. Uh, it is a kids movie, so I understand why this movie doesn't get incredibly dark here. But uh, they had plenty of time to kill all these parents, and not a single one ends up dead. No, they just like <laughs> fuck with them, though. Well, yeah, these trolls are like, watch me, watch me swallow sixty red bullets, but shoot back eighteen. <laughs> oh my god, when he puts the bullets in the mouth and the other one's hitting it in the back of the head, that was great. And miss you every time. <laughs> and miss you every time, probably because they're coming out of like every orifice in his fucking face. Miss Dad Sheriff specifically is who we're talking about, who's on the ground uh, cowering as these bullets fly over his head. They handcuff him to his car. <laughs> yeah. Handcuffed to his own car because he's a bad police officer. <laughs> How does that even happen? Because it, well, now he stopped giving his kid shit. Like, <laughs> Speaking of, Kenny shows up to save his ass and, and just... Apparently you don't need a lot of milk to kill these things. You need like a drip or a drop. Just a little squirt. That's about all it takes. A little squirt. A little squirt will do you. Also, was not expecting, was not expecting the uh, the viscera pile after uh, these things dissolved. Like I was like, that's dude. This thing goes all, it goes full Hellraiser. It goes full fucking Gremlins. I was like, that's blood and guts. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's a sloppy pile of bubbling shit. But the Tulip Brothers show up and they're like taking pictures and shit because they're like, this is amazing. This is an alien invasion. <laughs> so I think to adequately describe what's happening here, like. The movie has this, like, the convergence point where, like, everything happening in the movie is all coming to a head. But it's coming to a head by, via Ernest battling this fucking giant head on legs and his army of <laughs> troll <laughs> legs. 
with <laughs> Modoc. Yeah, 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 exactly. Modoc and AIM versus the Avengers. <laughs> Captain America is earnest. We also see like a slew of different ways, like using the items from the treehouse to take out these things. Like there's two trolls that chase Ernest like in a circle for like a solid minute straight. And Ernest has a lot of really great moments with the trolls. And I think we should say it because sure. one of one of my favorite moments that he has is when he first encounters one of the little like the little troll, you know, flunkies that it, it, he's basically a red shirt troll. <laughs> That yeah, it, he comes up and he has an axe, and Ernest kind of comes up and he's on his he's on all fours, kind of crawling <laughs> away, and he's like, "Oh shit, I've encountered a troll," and obviously he's about to get killed, and Ernest is kind of trying to distract him, and he's like, "Uh, blah, blah, blah. think of a number between one and ten. Was it two? And he pokes him <laughs> in the eyes. <laughs> Like, yeah, and he's always in these life or death situations, but he's even got time for jokes. He could just poke the guy in the eyes and call it a day, but he's got to get the lead in. Again, we we did that big bit about Army of Darkness, but, like, that's the most Army of Darkness moment in this fucking movie because, like... It kind of is. It really is. (laughs) In that movie, Ash is being attacked by things trying to murder him, and it devolves into a Three Stooges bit. I think this even predates that movie. (laughs) Yeah. And to, like, really elevate the scene, while he's doing all this, he is getting this montage of characters just march of, march of the wooden soldiering these fucking things to oh, death, yeah. just dropping them off the side, <laughs> uh, milk cartons and everything. There's a whole scene where shit just stops, and he's got a bowling uh, ball, and he's like, and he's like, and the hush falls over the crowd, and he's like, here comes Ernest P. World with the famous world twist, <laughs> and he shoots, and he fucking throws, he just, like, throws it through a, a basketball hoop, and it hits the fucking bumblebee guy on the head instead of the troll. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that, you know, that's payback for complaining about his garbage pickup. <laughs> and it leads to my second, the second cutaway gag, because he goes on and on about accepting this fucking bowling trophy. Bowling trophy. And then it cuts back to his fucking fourth grade teacher, and she goes, he never knew when to quit, and he scratches his fucking nails down the chalk board again and she smacks him him. (laughs) Uh, a lot of good gags here uh but while this is all going on uh trantor is basically like said well i'm fucked if i don't do something and goes like inside the tree and uh finishes some kind of ritual that we haven't i I guess now that he's got all the uh bodies and he uh calls the demons of hell to give him invincibility okay first of all if you have the ability or have the permission to call upon demons to make you invincible, why in the fuck would you do it at the end? Uh, because it's the climax. <laughs> the Thank movie. you for answering the rhetorical question, but... <laughs> you know, Clint Howard, he couldn't get Esteban until the end there, or else the whole movie would have went to shit. I was going to then point back to our many Dragon Ball references. It's like whenever someone gets the Dragon Balls, they're like, I'm going to wish for immortality, but first I'm going to dick around for 17 hours. <laughs> And allow right. the Dragon Balls get stolen <laughs> multiple times. Yeah, or even Chucky turning human, dude. He just fucks around for all that time. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I, he's like, my objective is to get a body, but let me just stop and murder this barber. <laughs> because. Uncle Frank's got it coming to him. <laughs> he does. Um. So, yeah, Trantor, he looks even creepier than before. Like, just has more, like, uh, ears and noses and spikes and and worms coming out of his body his fucking ears like grow these like long like tendril things that flip around and he's got like tusks in his mouth and shit now yeah it's a super shredder moment yeah it, oh totally is oh super shredder versus super trantor maybe super shredder versus Ernest. <laughs> I mean, Super Shredder got taken out like a fucking chump in about four seconds, so I don't think he would last long. Super Shredder took himself out, just like Kevin Nash does in real life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he comes out all, all powered up, and milk doesn't work on him now. No. Well, because I think there's like a whole scene where he's going after Kenny, and Kenny gets like the pistol that has milk in it, and it doesn't do anything. Yeah, and then he turns fucking Kenny into a wood doll and, like, jumps on top of him and shit. And then he murders him, right? That's what happened? Yeah, we all saw right? it. He jumped on his little wooden doll, and I distinctly heard a crack. Oh, that fucking head's coming off, don't you think? Yeah, I, like, not to, you know, 
put the car before the horse, but uh, <laughs> like imagine they they undo this and like everyone's like, oh my god, and it flashes back to Kenny and he's like, I can't feel my legs. There's no way that kid came out of there with four limbs. Oh, like, no, <laughs> no, he he is clearly like on the verge of dead. Anyone who has watched this has had that moment where he jumps on it and they're like, there is no yeah. way, yeah, there is no way yeah. that that kid is still alive. Also, like why film it that way and why frame it that way if it's not if it's not meant to be significant because like they zoom in on his feet s- slamming on top of this little wooden dummy you're like oh that kid's dead like <laughs> he just killed the child <laughs> imagine if like when everybody comes back kenny's just like in three or four pieces <laughs> i yeah i think that's what connor's kind of saying <laughs> it's just but it's like it's they're just like cl- it's like clean you know oh he's just four parts and he can't he doesn't know yeah, yeah, he can't put himself back to get like yeah there's uh i i just want to mention it real quick again he has Ernest has like a whole nother scene where he does like the multiple personality thing um and there's a bunch of great gags uh it's pretty I just want to highlight like a couple of those because he turns back into the fucking lumberjack again and he's like oh you got you want some of this milk punch and he fucking like dumps it down a hole the, the old lady in the neck brace is the one that sends out like the doomsday flyer <laughs> the the dropper yeah oh my god that was funny but like the amount of time that took to like happen as she was like flying it over I'm like okay what's the big send off for this just two milk cartons well yeah the two, the two, uh, the two last trolls get fucking eighty six, and then Trantor comes out. The killer clowns get taken out that way. <laughs> you, sh- you shoot them in the nose. Actually, they kind of go the same way. Well, not really. Yeah, I think they might, but they're all taken care of, and that's and that is when Trantor comes out, all powered up, and uh, he's 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 uh, unstoppable. He crushed Kenny. He's going after Ernest to kind of end this uh, loop. And, and everybody's uh, everybody's cheering him on in slow motion. They're like, "Kill him! Kill the fucking troll!" And Hackmore's like, "No, do you, you, Ernest doesn't get it, uh, Maya man. He doesn't get it. He's got to kill him with in- unconditional love." Thank God, Ernest has impeccable hearing because she is like <laughs> twenty yards off, like muttering to this guy <laughs> over a violent crowd. Again, like this is a pretty good message because they're just like, "Yeah, kill him with kindness." This is where the movie starts to fall apart for me. I know it took this long. <laughs> Jesus, really? This, this is what does it for me. So, so Ernest is like, "Come on, little fella!" <laughs> then he jumps up and they start dancing together, and everybody's watching them dance real lovingly and then Ernest kisses this fucking thing on the mouth <laughs> and like pulls back and there's just snot shit all over his face he's See, just like here's, here's where this doesn't fall apart for me because like not once again in my life can I tell someone and then the movie ended with a grown man grabbing a troll by the waist slow dancing him to death and then kissing him on the face and then his fucking head explodes, <laughs> his head explodes. A, tender, a tender moment leading the scanners it's so fucking great his head explodes and like his evil forces go out on a fart they're just like sure <laughs> literally out on a fart yeah i love it I, it's funny I, listen i'm not trying to be a debbie downer here it is fucking funny i just think like even in the context of this film like that's how you know this guy became so powerful the only way to beat him was to give him a hug and a kiss well unconditional love heart of a child because it follows this like circus routine of like pg fights and like yeah. device shenanigans and like more like i said plunder like, it is kind of, like, a weird, like, I wouldn't say, a, like, a deflation or a letdown, but the energy is totally uneven. Different, for sure. I I, I guess I don't I don't hate it. I mean, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating a little bit just for the sake of comedy here, uh, but it, it's, I, I would have liked something else, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I, I don't know what that would have been, but it wasn't this. And like I said, for me personally, because the way you then put that out on paper and be like oh yeah it ends in this completely absurd ridiculous fashion i'm kind of okay with it now sure i mean guardians of the galaxy it basically ends with uh, a dance off yeah. so sure i don't know it's befitting to the earnest character too you know what i mean it's kind of the culmination of his character and that's what like he literally kills this thing by just being earnest yeah no i you're kind of turning me around on it as you're as you're conveying this <laughs> uh point between between everybody here i just i think i just have a pet peeve in general when something is presented even for the sake of comedy of being like oh it just got its most powerful form and it's taken out for the sake of a joke but maybe a weird hang up on my end it's not that big of a deal doesn't ruin the movie by any stretch what if right here Ernest woke up from a dream and none of it was real well then that would ruin the movie easily <laughs> Oh my god, that would be that would actually make this movie a piece of shit. I would hate it. 
<laughs> they're all inside a snow globe. Oh, shut up. They're all inside a pumpkin, right? Yeah. Now, you, you save that by making uh, Trantor then wake up. <laughs> In under the tree, right? He's still in the sack. His dream was Ernest having a dream about kissing him to death. <laughs> well, yeah, because Ernest is in the bed next to him. He's got the bonnet on and the glasses, reading a magazine. <laughs> so all the kids turn back into people from the wood from their wood prisons, and uh, even uh, even old lady Hackmore's uh, uh, sister and and brother and some other little kids. Uh, come out and they're like, Jesus Christ, Sister Francis, you're so fucking old. What happened? She's like, ah, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to show you what a fucking automobile is. First, we need to get you vaccinated against polio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to run some tests on you. That's what I was going to say. Wouldn't it be just like the real kicker if they come back and sh- and she's like, we have a lot to talk about. And they're, they're all hugging and kissing. And those kids died of fucking measles. I mean, that's that's the realistic answer. But I, I just want to see the one where she finally gets him back to like her hut. Uh, and they're, she's all ready to start teaching them about the new world they live in, and she dies, like, croaks right then and there because she's so fucking old. That's what I was going to say. She dies, and then these poor kids have to go to the fucking orphanage. Yeah, they meet Matilda there, <laughs> the Trunchbull's there. <laughs> the, the, the Trunchbull gets them? Yeah, maybe. Oh, my God. And then Ernest kind of looks like uh, he he's not getting any love, even though he saved the fucking day, and, and potentially the world, and I guess he wants part of this weird orphanage that Hackmore's going to start <laughs> and joins them, I guess. Uh, well, he is all sad, too, because his dog died. But... This poor guy. Well, yeah, he's like, there's nothing in that tree for me. Because everybody's, like, rejoicing and hugging and whatever. They hold off on it for just long enough because you're like, this parade of kids coming. It's kind of like, I was thinking of Homeward Bound when, like, all the dogs come home first and Shadow's the one that doesn't show up. And you're like, fuck, that dog is super old. And last time I saw him, he was dying <laughs> in a mud pit. And then, yeah, he comes over the hill. Um, not as dramatic, but I was like, well, you waited just long enough for me to go, like, what about his dog? And then all is right in the world. Yeah, it's sweet. The dog jumps up and it's, like, kissing him and stuff. And he's in earnest is talking about all the stuff they're going to do together. And it just, like, closes on Earth a kit, like, winking at the camera. <laughs> And that's it. That's It's so good. We get that theme song over the credits again. Oh, yeah. Kick it up because it's fucking bringing it back. So what uh, what treat is this in our treat bags? Um, This is because it's available now. And if I were a kid, I would totally want this. Um, uh, this is a four pack of the uh, more peanut butter Reese's peanut butter cups that were just made available like last year. Um, but I want to throw them into Speed Force so I can have them as a child. Um. Uh, this was, I guess, actually very much like those candies. I had no idea what was coming. Um, uh, and I was so pleasantly surprised. And I've kind of given away a lot of, like, you know, emotions about this movie. But, like, I really want to kind of underline it. Like, this is a really, really fun movie. I think without Jim Varney, without certain other key ingredients like Eartha Kit, I think this would be just a dumb kids movie. With some pretty impressive, like, practical effects at the end. Um, but um, because Jim Varney is so likable and the Ernest character is, like, just fucking, like, you can't not just, like, I can't help but emotionally invest in you. Um, and between him and Eartha Kit stealing every scene they're in, um, it's, you, I couldn't not just be completely enamored by the whole thing. Um, and the fact that it has 17% on Rotten Tomatoes confused me today. Um, cause I thought that was wild because like everything I know about this movie was, it was very well regarded by like, you know, current day audiences who had seen it, who remembered it very well. I can't imagine not liking this. It's that's bizarre. To yeah. Me. Cause like, I don't, it doesn't even in some capacity, it never comes off to me as trying to insult my intelligence, even when it's trying to like reach my inner child. Which now I've already said in the show is hard to do because some of these kids movies we watched, I'm sorry, were like banal like torture devices that like were just draining my sanity. And this I never felt like I was being um, like I was wasting time. Um, I also think that like all the you know the the like I said the life lessons or whatever kind of knowledge they're trying to impart on kids is all well-meaning in all lands, um, and I think it's hard to do a kids movie that doesn't make you, you know, doesn't kind of make you feel dumb as an adult and doesn't want to dumb down your kid that isn't like Pixar or something that's like really high class. Um, And I'm not saying this is some kind of form of high art, 
but it's really damn funny and it's really entertaining and if you haven't seen it please go watch it because as a first timer this is so fun (laughs) (laughs) um this is the you know okay they they only i only really see them during christmas but you know those giant fucking snicker bars that are for like 16 people oh oh the and they have hershey bars like that too yeah well mine's a giant fucking snickers and for six made for 16 people but i'm gonna eat the entire thing like this is what this film is for me you're you're eating the whole advent calendar in one sitting the entire thing the giant snickers you're going to buca de beppo and you're getting one plate for yourself oh yeah I'm not even cutting it. I'm just going to start taking bites out of it. This is this is such a classic movie for me and has been such a big part of Halloween for me since I can remember. Um, and it's a little odd to me. I, I, I was so taken aback, Connor, when you hadn't had seen this before. Or, or, or really anybody kind of my age hasn't seen this because Ernest was such a huge fucking part of pop culture at that time, especially growing up um, for me. I mean, there's like, you know, he, it was just as big as like Steve Urkel or, or, uh, or something similar to that. You know what I mean? Like, or, or like Joe, or like had, like Pissy had said before, um, like Elvira or something, you know, it was that kind of uh, burned into um, uh, pop culture at that time. So I I feel like uh, even like what you just said about like people like not enjoying this or 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 what have you like th- this is a, a staple that that kind of completes Halloween like I need to watch this every year for my rounds when I make my rounds of, of watching Halloween movies yeah and to supplement that like I told Ashley like before we recorded I was like hey we're recording right watching Ernest Scared Stupid and like she immediately was like hey Vern um <laughs> right like and it's it's weird to be on the receiving end of like pop culture currency we were like I don't know what that means um <laughs> A what? Yeah, a what? Who's Vern? I knew who that was because <laughs> I already had context for that. But like, sure. But even sh- like, I can, I can name how many movies have we've done. Okay, so I can name fifty movies we watch. She would go, "What the fuck is that?" To every one of them. And as soon as I got <laughs> right, to right, Ernest, she knows scared, Ernest. stupid, she went. Yeah. She looked like a fucking Christmas tree. She was like, "Holy shit!" Right. She's like, "You haven't fucking seen <laughs> Ernest scared stupid?" <laughs> right. Ninety nine movies, no dice. Ernest scared stupid. What the fuck? <laughs> so. Just just to just to kind of go off that, like Jim Varney and Ernest are just a, have just been a big part of my life in general. Uh, growing up, whether it's with Toy Story or with Ernest, you know, Ernest saves Christmas, Ernest goes to jail, Ernest goes to camp, all that. But Ernest Scared Stupid is peak uh, for me. I think this is the best Ernest film, hands down. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I think this was the last time Ernest was was really great. And it, it, it just, it's just like this perfect concoction of like, it's kids movie, but it can also be enjoyed by an adult, but it never goes too far with where it takes things. Like I mentioned Hocus Pocus at the beginning of, of this uh, podcast. And while I love Hocus Pocus, and I think it's an essential Halloween movie, it's not necessarily saying anything um i also think that i think that certain powers and certain bodies have like exaggerated how important that movie is to halloween by having it played like i feel like it's played out more than a christmas story is and that movie airs for a whole fucking day once a year but that's fine with me like again like i'll watch hocus pocus two or three times throughout the year i mean that's fine yeah i don't have a problem like watching the movie personally but it seems to be have found its place like elevated among uh, like a lot of other things and i'm like how did it get there yeah but even but i i I know how it got there a it's disney b it's like a really a really feel good type of halloween flick but uh where was i going with that um and I know a few people who who have just seen that fucking movie. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, that's even I feel like that's even more uh, a staple than than Ernest's. But in my opinion, um, Ernest takes the fucking taco on this one. Um, probably like I mean, again, like Night of the Demons and like Trick or, or Trick or Treat are excellent Halloween movies, and I love them very much. But as far as like something you can enjoy with anybody, like your nieces and nephews or like your little sister or even like mom and dad or like grandpa or whatever, like this is the flick. It's equal parts scary and funny and and sweet and 
and when it says something, it says it says it very positively. I, I guess. Um, I like how everybody's treated in this movie. Um, even the bullies when they're when they're fucking with the other kids, like don't go too far, you know. And they have a face turn. Like, <laughs> and they have a face turn anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's. Qu- <laughs> I, I'm. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but like this is like quintessential Halloween, a uh, Halloween movie for me. And um, even though he's been dead for geez twenty years, um, this like Jim Varney's still reaching out. Like again, like even to Connor and and touching Connor in like a positive way and being like, "Oh, this man's a treasure." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pissy, for giving that the giggle I wanted to give. <laughs> oh, what'd you say? Did I fucking fuck that no, up? No, not. I wouldn't say you fucked it up, but I was like, I was like, where are we going with this? This you're. you're- you said you re- reached out and touched Connor and like. <laughs> I meant to say like it's uh you're experiencing you're getting to experience this for the first time and it still holds up really well is what I meant to say. But yeah, giant fucking size, not even the king size, the giant size, four foot long fucking Snickers bar for me. Um. I love this movie so much. I agree. I'm it's it's it is a very good movie and it definitely holds a place in in my you know kids horror lexicon. Uh I I do happen to be one of those awful people who loves Hocus Pocus. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. <laughs> no, Hocus Pocus is great. It, it it is. This holds up. I mean, it it holds up against all of those things because you have really elevated camp. You have really elevated comedy as well as horror. And you have this guy, Jim Varney, who's doing everything he can to make you laugh. I mean, including drag. There is drag in this movie. (laughs) So I don't know. I I agree with you. I do think it's a I do think it's a great movie. I uh, would do you do you have a uh, Halloween candy that you would maybe compare it to? Uh, for me, <laughs> this is candy corn. <laughs> Absolutely. But I also love candy corn. I think this is like a uh, it's it's a bubblegum pop for me. And, like a blow uh, pop, you mean? Yeah, blow pop. Uh, because I like this movie, even though I'm you know I'm. Listen to the episode, and you guys sitting here with me, uh, you know, I, I nitpick it. I always got to nitpick these movies because that's just the way that I watch movies. Sure. Um, but I, I specifically go with the blow pop because I remember eating so fucking many of those as a kid, and Tootsie Pops for that matter. And, uh, you know, the gum always tastes like shit by the time you got to it, but I still chewed on it for like way too long <laughs> to the point where it just tasted like you had an eraser in your mouth. And I think that's what this movie is. And and just to kind of make that point a little bit more evident to what I mean is I, I can't eat that shit anymore. Uh, you know, I, I the second I put it in my mouth, I'm already biting into it. I'm not even waiting fucking two minutes for this thing to get down to, a, to an easier uh, bite ratio. And I think that, you know, as a kid, uh, as a teenager, I love this movie quite a bit. Uh, I It wasn't something I had on... You know, I, I didn't watch it on the regular, but every year it came on, I you know, I'd watch it. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier in this episode, it's probably been a decade since I've done that. And I think in that decade, I just, uh, there's certain parts of it that I just didn't find as funny as maybe I did when I was younger. And that's, that's there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a movie made for kids. It's it, But at the end of the day, it's still an earnest movie, so there's a lot that I like. And uh, I think everything about that blow pop is good until you get to that gum center, and that is just kind of like... I guess my age or, or uh, my tastes have changed. Um, I don't know how to put into words. I hope that's making sense. It's, it's just, sure. There's little things here and there that, that, that I don't like about it. And I have to revisit Jail because I think that, you know, in, in the scheme of earnest movies, that's the one I remember the most fondly enjoying. And I, I feel like the thing with that one, I could be totally wrong about this on a rewatch because uh, that's also been probably a decade. But I feel like that one has the least amount of kids as the main character there i don't think i don't think there's any i don't think there's any kids as main characters and that's probably why i like it the most because that is my problem with this movie and i get again i get that they're kind of the focus because that is the target audience and that's uh, what john cherry and and i'm assuming jim varney wanted to go for with this flick was make the kids the hero not Ernest. and uh that 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 does work but it kind of grates on me a little bit here and there you know kind of thinking about what connor mused about a little bit ago about all these kids movies always drive them up the wall 
Um, they just they take a little bit away from it for me here, but it's inoffensive. I, I can't be too mad about it. Uh, so it's, you know, honestly, you know, if I was going to give a star rating on this, not that we really do that, but it's like, it's a three or four out of five. You know, it's a good movie. I just don't love it. Three or four blow pops out of five? <laughs> Could be. Blow them blow up. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm going to take those three or four blow pops. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, I'm going to bite into them, get the gum out, and then I'm going to go into my closet. <laughs> Uh, say hello, say hello to this disgusting slop uh, Baldwin statue. Disgusting blob. This fucking Akira monster you have growing in your house. It's really, you know, there's even like tendrils or some shit attached to the walls now. I really can't even explain it, put it into words. Oh my god, looks like a fucking alien uh, cocoon. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of bodily fluids involved with this by now. Every time he walks in there, it goes, it goes Tetsuo. <laughs> Kill me. I got GVD technology. I got Hurt technology in here. I've even got Wraith technology in here. <laughs> Don't ask me how I got any of it. Uh, it's a company secret. It all works via sentient bubblegum. Yeah, well, there you go. That's exactly where this bubblegum's <laughs> going is right on Baldwin's face. Uh, it's three or four blow pops. You could decide how that looks in your mind. But again, this Baldwin statue, the face is made out of like junk. I think I said there was pimples made out of like... I, I can't remember. I, I'd have to go back and look at the tapes, but I'm not going back uh, 99 episodes to try to figure it out. Granted, it was all season three. I guess I could figure it out in a matter of minutes, but uh, I'm not going to, so... Pe pepperoni nipples. Pe I know that, well, they got turned into 20-sided dye at one point. I know that. <laughs> Regardless, there's gum on this Baldwin face. They're the freckles. I think I said that's where the, the, the cream of the crop goes, and even though Ernest is not cream of the crop, during Halloween, it's cream of the crop, so it goes up there in the pimple area. And uh, it's only a matter of time before this Baldwin statue just uh, gets to the point where I'm going to have to get a dump truck and just, uh, you know, put all the pieces into it. I, I don't think we're quite there. Uh, again, let me look at my watch. That definitely tells me the date uh, that I'm wearing right now. I, I think uh, by Christmas we might have a solution for Baldwin, but, uh, you know, I can't guarantee anything. It's possible. You're shipping off to the Avengers compound? <laughs> Happy Hogan's going to come along and fucking collect everything. I, I don't know. I don't know. People are going to have to stay tuned. It might even end up in a box at that uh, facility Indiana Jones uh, has where all the fucking artifacts go. There you go, probably. Uh, I, I'm just pretty much trying to do this long tease for an episode that's not going to be recorded for a month and a half. <laughs> uh, to, you know, come back at that. I, I know what the episode is. I, I have the schedule memorized, but uh, people at home don't. No, they don't. So... So definitely watch this if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, revisit it. It's it's, it's a fun film, like Joe said. It's good for families, and uh, it's it's a good time, generally speaking. Again, I enjoyed it. I'll watch it again next year. It's it's a hoot for sure. <laughs> uh, so, Pissy, uh, where can everybody find you? you? You know, you can find Pissy Miles uh, on My Spooky Gay Family, which is uh, obviously the, the podcast that I host with my sister, Sam. And you can find us at myspookygayfamily.com or you can find me at pissymiles.com. Both were designed by my amazing husband, David. Uh, and he would probably have shot me if I hadn't said that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any good stuff coming up? We do. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, <laughs> we have, we, we are releasing our episodes. Uh, we just did the 30, the, the 31 weeks of Halloween. <laughs> The 13 weeks of Halloween, and we have our Halloween episode coming out. I, I don't know how much I can say, but we did one of my favorite uh, Halloween movies. Ooh. We did the 2018 Halloween. Okay. Very good movie. For this one. And it is one of my very favorites, and I think, uh, I think that applies to anyone who likes the Halloween franchise. It sure. is just one of those movies that feels perfect when it yeah. comes to when it comes to Halloween and it's kind of the perfect rebirth of of Halloween so uh you can find me at pissymiles.com you can find me on Facebook Instagram Twitter Tumblr Pornhub wherever you look I promise <laughs> I will be there uh and I'll pass it right back to you. Love it. And uh, a little unknown fact I don't know if we've ever actually publicly spoken about it but pissy and David, we're on set for the making of the barbecue ad. They lent a big hand. We were, and I ruined one of your fucking <laughs> one of your <laughs> barbecue sauces because oh, the the, the GVD special yeah, sauce. I, I did. I ruined one of the special sauces, so one of you didn't get the original. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> special sauces that you were supposed to because I pulled the seal off of it. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I ended up with that one. You know, Gramps gets the best. You know, Gramps gets the good stuff. Uh, I could have just taped it up, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's get a new one. I know. And I had been licking it, so you <laughs> yeah. would have gotten COVID. It was just, yeah. it was not good for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you did get it. Maybe, who, who knows? You know, somebody somebody did. No, just kidding. <laughs> But uh, but yeah. So uh, so make sure uh, you go put that secret code in. I know you guys heard it already. So make sure you go uh, on your favorite social media app and send us the special code word and get entered for this week's giveaway. This is our last trick or trash giveaway. So if there's anyone to enter, it's definitely this one. You better get on there. And we'll announce the winner of that the uh, Wednesday after this drops. So November fourth, usually later in the day. Yeah, we'll be going. We'll be going into November with this. But we got some really cool shit coming up for November, rolling into December. Um, but we'll get there. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, be on the lookout for that MD guide. It'll be it'll be dropping. Yeah, keep those eyes peeled. We got some, we got some more guests coming up. We got all kinds of good stuff coming up. Another event month coming. Um, and again. Uh, if you want to support the show, jump onto that Patreon. Uh, sign up for two dollar, five dollar, ten dollar tiers for no money at all. Go on to that Apple Podcast, leave us a five star review. That would be awesome. <laughs> and you don't have to spend any money. How about that? Yeah. And if you leave us a review, we always reshare it, and uh, we always appreciate it. And we always love to call out our patrons for all their support. And we'd like to thank Hunter Davenport, Brendan Lemune, the Autistic Gamer eighty nine, Christopher, Jacob Chavez. Leonardo, Roberto, Talavera, Barocio. Oh, he gets no call out this week from me because he had some illicit comments with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I fucking saved that moment, didn't I, Leo? Okay. <laughs> hard, hard, uh, hardball from Connor here. <laughs> I told him it was going to happen. Uh, Amanda Tweed, Joe has a mustache, Dustin Elkins, Nick Lowry, Dalton Bell, Sergio Murillo, Matt Collins, Tyler Monte. Lucio Fulci's butt, our friend, Joe's fiance, Julie Lockwood, thank you very much. And of course, our newest patron, Kyle McDonald. Thank you all for being our patrons. Thank you so much. And thank you, Pissy, for coming on the show. It was a blast. Really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, truly, the, the, the pleasure is all yours. So <laughs> I... I, I want to say thank you so much for having me. It really is nothing but a pleasure to be here with you guys. I love Movie Dumpster, and uh, I, I'm even, I am even—I—I almost wore my Movie Dumpster shirt just to record the episode, but I thought, you know what? I had to turn the air conditioning off to record this, so I'm going to wear a tank top. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. You know, I, 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 by happenstance, I talked about Tony from Hack the Movies, Hack the Living Dead earlier in this episode, and I completely forgot until this moment that I'm wearing a Joker fan 279 shirt. <laughs> Tony, if you hear this, uh, love the shirt still, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's Ernest Scared Stupid from 1991, directed by John Cherry. Hey, everybody, if you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us anywhere you listen to your podcast, and make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show, because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw, and this has been my favorite episode of Movie Dumpster. <laughs> and I'm Pissy Miles. Thanks for visiting the dumpster and hanging out for all these hundred episodes. Woe to you, oh, you see the world. Get out of here and don't come back. I wish you'd reconsider. Oh. Recycling is a very important part of good citizenship. Yes, yeah. and you'll be a dead citizen when the poisons of the evil causes through the portals and channels of your body. You will lie, a quivering, toxic mass of screaming flesh. They will have to load you and the rest of this backward town on a meat wagon with a meat fork. So, in other words, it might be better if I came back another day. Ah! Hey, on. Isn't that a little chancy? I mean, this is Halloween. Isn't that when all the creepy things were supposed to stock the earth? It deals with demons. Demon resurrection and those forces which roam the forest and dark bowers of man's domain. The first few pages warn that these enduring creatures may lie dormant but are never truly dead. It's Halloween, gentlemen. Halloween, have you forgotten?
They're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. Trick or treat.